Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here to the VIS Challenger Series, VIS 64, uh, part of the uh, the home of the official North America Challenge Series, and we are bringing you guys group number B of the second split of autumn season here in the Challenger Series. And uh, joining me tonight, it is Four Court Jester and Tasty Bacon. Guys, welcome. We've got an exciting jam-packed night full of uh, games that we're going to be putting in uh, here up on the stream momentarily uh the first of which is gonna be a pretty exciting one but i uh, i just want to make sure i give you guys a quick intro how's it going oh yeah i mean it's always good to be coming back into the fold here especially with my good friend tasty bacon who is my third time sub now he hit my three sub monthly so he's my bestest of friends hey I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I, it's actually on a recurring thing, apparently. So whenever I go to your stream, like if it's been a month, like since the last, like that is how it works. Yes. Yeah. It just, <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't, I didn't actually know that when I first subbed. I was just like, oh, it just charged me again. Okay. And wow. but then I can just click right, a little I button. All back, bacon. I take it. But all then back. I can click a little button, and it's like it says that I resubbed for three months, and it makes it look. Like, to me, it sounds like, oh, you just subbed for an additional three months when it's really just it's been a total of three months. Dragon, you're my bestest of friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, Forkward, uh, I, I appreciate the friendship. Thank you. Sorry, Tasty. Uh, <laughs> as we as we get started tonight, uh, we have, of course, a jam-packed night. Lots of matches to show you guys. Uh, we're going to have three solid rounds in the winner bracket. And hopefully, if we got time, show you a match in the last round of the loser bracket. To start things off, we're going to put up the bracket uh, that we're talking about. This is group number B. Uh, the key distinction here is that group A was yesterday, right? So the 1 through 64, you know, interchangeably, that was yesterday. And then we have the remaining 32 teams. Uh, that starting off with the C2 uh, that are going to be taking place tonight. And uh, a lot of exciting matchups here. Um, maybe some of the more exciting ones aren't going to happen until later into these rounds. But to start off, you know, number two seed, the top of their bracket, Noble Pro, they're going up against Genku Force. And uh, Noble Pro, that is a team that we, you know, we got to see a lot of. They've definitely shown that they can perform really well. It's been exciting. What are your thoughts as far as how far you think they're going to make a run in here, Tasty Bacon? Uh well, you never really know to to go with the uh, the politically correct answer. You know, every team could make it a surprising deep run. So it's just going to be really exciting to actually see what they can actually pull off here. Four court, any uh, favorites? Any teams you really think are going to make a deep run? Maybe surprises. I I think Art of the Throw is is deserving of a win at least here in the first of the rounds. But uh, you know if. If it's not, I, I, I'm just going to have to throw my prediction. Yeah, one team that kind of fell a little bit into this split from their seeding is Pinga Reformed, a, a team I think that a lot of people expected to perform better than they did last season. Um, for me, uh, you know, I, I think last group yesterday we had some exciting matchups. But, uh, you know, Necrolite is back. That's a team that you guys may have heard of. They actually were uh, in the Evil 8 at one point there. So, you know, they've kind of regathered some of their roster. Uh, and then last... Split Terminal uh, actually performed fairly well, considering their seeding. Uh, so I'm really excited to see teams like that uh, make it in. So, And, well, speaking of Art of the Throw, that is actually the matchup that we are bringing you tonight. And uh, we have, you know, we feel like this is definitely an exciting matchup, kind of instead of starting off with the number two seed and watching a blowout, bringing you guys something a little bit closer. Although Art of the Throw, they are the higher seed here. And they've got Fuji, Humanist, and Starboy as their starting cast going up against Team Exodile. And uh, that is a Team Exodile X. And, um, you know, a roster that we probably don't know a whole lot about, but they're definitely closer in seeding to Art of the Throw. Uh, we'll see how they perform tonight. Uh, Tasty Bacon, any thoughts on this matchup? Well, I mean, Art of the Throw got finally got their first Challenger wins last split. So uh, going to be looking to continue on that trend and you know, hopefully have a little bit of better performance this time around. Yeah, they definitely have some hits and misses uh, in this last split uh, as far as them coming in. But it looks like we are about ready to get into the game. So Tasty Bacon, uh, let's get into the draft. All right, well, jumping right on in, you can see immediately Art of the Throw taking uh, one of the strategies I taught them of ban Taka every opportunity that you get. And, uh, and Sky <laughs> is going to be... Yes, that is actually my strategy. If I have ban option, I ban Taka every single time. I don't know, according uh, to Playoff Beard, he just shouldn't be that bannable offense these days, man. I, 
it doesn't matter. It's it's more of a uh, principle and a morals type thing at this point, where I just despise Taka with a passion. But it does mean the Kestrel is going to be the first pick. A lot of priority has been put on this pick uh, for really every team out there. So not at all surprising to see it first. Or there's going to then be the Saw and the Lance coming through. Finn also, and I would expect this last one, uh, actually with Kestrel, there's a lot of, I would actually expect this to be a Celeste coming through for Art of the Throw. Yeah, just throw the Kestrel off into the jungle. Picking up the Finn is a really nice uh, way to go here from Art of the Throw. I'm a little curious that Exodial, which is a name I'm going to have to just look up, uh, but uh, you know, picking that Lance into the Saw, that's, um, I really would have expected the Finn to go with the Saw. Yeah, I definitely would have, but you know they opted to take that Lance and now Catherine as well, so it's most likely going to be the carry Lance. Oh, you just hope uh, it's the carry Lance. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, if, uh, I would say that uh, they should be hoping it's the carry Lance as well, because if it's a carry Catherine, I don't expect it to be able to do too well. But for the side of Art of the Throw, this is a draft that they have been really liking quite a bit. Humanus is actually going to be on the roam here, so he's the one to pick up the fin. And as we go into it with the Catherine on uh, Mora, Mora, Teo, Chak, and Maelstron, we're going to have to see how this Sawborg uh, you know, kind of stacks up there in lane up against the Celeste. The Celeste, you know, going with that first pick saw, especially on B side, it's certainly gutsy. I mean, you saw the Kestrel, probably could have played a little bit more safer and kind of hid the pick. But, you know, Fuji picking up that Celeste, that's, that's a pretty good counter to it early on. Yeah, absolutely is, and well, we'll have to see if they can make this draft work. It's one of Humanist's favorite compositions at the moment, so you got to figure he's definitely happy to have picked this one up. But uh, in terms of what, well, that's interesting. What? Um, oh yeah, we're missing somebody. <laughs> yeah, there are only two members on the side of Tex. Maybe want to throw a pause at this one there, Dragon. Two members of Tex have come into it. Don't exactly know where the third one is. Uh, we'll see if we can get some communication there with the team. But not not the start that we thought it would be. But again, Fuji up into the <laughs> lane on the Celeste, up against the Saw. Saw's going to have his work cut out for him. Does pick up that book. So, I mean, are we, are we actually going to see a Crystal Saw despite that book here, Bacon? I would expect a Crystal Saw, especially if you're going to be having the carry Lance as well. It uh, just allows you to have that, you know, your damage sources split. But, uh, yeah, for <laughs> Exodial X, definitely uh, oh, see if we can get this one sorted out. Because 2v3, this is this is definitely an issue with... Uh, it's not so much a connection issue as it is a client issue that has been cropping up every once in a while. Yeah, so that's no fun. That I mean, can he even enter... The match, I think this happened to me once. It was in a battle royale, and I'm not entirely too sure if we actually resolved it or not, if we just played it through, but not having somebody loading into the game sounds rather, uh, you know, disruptive. Yeah, I'm not sure what exact. I haven't had it happen to myself personally, thankfully. Uh, knock on wood here. But uh, it's definitely uh, could be a detractor to the team's ability to try and win the game. Yeah, actually knocking on wood. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Wooden so, desk. Yeah. Let you so do what that. What does exodial mean? Do you actually know bacon? Um, the closest thing I know is exodia, and yeah. I'm pretty sure it's not what they're uh, a going quick Google for. Google search for exodial brings up a lot of French stuff. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. of companies with the word exodial in it in uh, Paris. But, uh, I mean, is this a new esports team? Is this just a group of friends? It, it's not something that's really ringing a bell to me here. Yeah, no, it's not one that I've heard of either. Um, even, like, I, I just don't know what exactly Exodial means or what it's for. So, who knows? We'll have to ask them if we get a chance. But, for now, uh, we'll see if we have uh, any words from... Uh, Exodial, uh, keeping an eye on just the the communication lines that we have with them to see what's going on. Exodial is uh, apparently also a religion, according to the internet. Not entirely too sure if I uh, believe that one, Dragon. Well, yeah. Uh, just to update, uh, as we kind of get into this, we are trying to resolve it. It may mean that we need to force a. Uh, 
a surrender if that if that comes down to it because we do want to try to get these teams in we'll have to just check with the other team see if he can load in during this pause as we really can't tell until we unpause it so once we get confirmation we'll jump into this game or uh, do a quick surrender so you guys will hear from me in just a few seconds so exordial is apparently a word but that has an r in it and i don't see an r here in exordial i i think that they were going for exodia but they didn't want to be like too blatant about Exodia, so they just went with Exodial. There's no definition of what the word actually means, though. So, I, I mean, know. I'm kind of at my uh, world's end on that one there, Bacon. It, it's nothing that's really coming up or cropping up, and we'll, we'll just have to see if uh, the Exodial team can can make it through. Would be nice if the guy could actually connect to the game, but if he's you know not even loaded in with character bottle, I'm not entirely too sure we can actually get a connect here. Yeah, so, well, again, we the only way for us to really check if uh, if the player is connected, which it, it doesn't look like, their picture's not even on the screen. Right, that's, that's what I'm talking about. So I would have to assume that they are not loaded in. So they're we're more, more than likely them. going to just have to uh, force a restart and just remake the game. It's not okay. like anything's happened at this point. Yeah, nothing has happened, and obviously, you know, we just have them keep the same draft, and that's uh, just that's that. Some Twitch viewers out there saying uh, throwing the match before it started. <laughs> it's pretty OP. I mean, yeah, you would have expected it from the art of the throw out of anybody. But... Well, maybe they just know art of the throw strategy is to throw. And so they decide, you know what? We're just going to throw right off the bat before art of the throw even gets a chance to try. We're going to beat them at their own game of throwing. Exactly. Yeah, okay, that could be smart. Maybe, we'll have to see by the end of it. Uh, looking at the gr group brackets as we ha just going to let the admins deal with uh, this. You know, Noble Pros in this group, Mutiny out there, those names we've seen before here, Mr. Bacon, Terminal, that's uh, that's something that comes up. Necrolite and Don't Vainglory. I wonder if Don't, uh, Don't is all in capitals. I wonder if that's an acronym for something, but Don't Vainglory playing in a Vainglory tournament sounds rather... Well, uh, in, in Europe, we had a player whose username was I Hate This Game. I hate this. <laughs> but see, that's a little bit more generic. It's not like you're targeting out this game. He can just say that on every game. His username can be I hate this game on every game he plays. Yeah, it, it made for some fun Twitter situations Twitter. while casting where like Humanist forgot that the player's name was I hate this game. And so then when I randomly just said, and I hate this game, he's like, whoa, what? What? How do you forget <laughs> that? It's not like really you're going to be separated from the teams for an ex exemplary amount of time. But... Well, don't Vainglory. We'll have to see how they deal up against Necrolite, formerly of Evil 8. Art of the Throw, of course, is playing up against Exodial. Uh, Team Enix, they're back in action. Uh, we had some really good runs from them before. Yeah, Enix uh, made it very deep in the previous split. I believe they actually were in a challenge. They were either in the challenge battle or they just narrowly missed the challenge battle. Um, actually double-checking that right here now, but... Yeah, they're definitely. Uh, Enix is a one favorite to make it pretty deep. They have some recognizable names in Marto and uh, I'm trying to remember who else they had. They had someone who had a name change. Yeah, they had Bladeheart. They had Bruticus. Uh, pretty strong roster. Bruticus, yeah, Bruticus. A melee jungler in the times of not really melee. Yeah, but he he did good. I like yeah, Bruticus. Rumbly he was also in Grasscoon. Yeah, Grasscoon. Is yeah, Enix still on the team. Enix did, make it, He's on Enix. Oh, Enix did make it to the challenge battle. So, yeah, they uh, almost had a shot yeah, at it. Yeah, they were the third seed. Well, guys, as we try to resolve this, as one of the players appears to have lost, you know, internet completely, uh, and right before the game even started, right before draft uh, was about That's wrapped up. Scary. So we're going to take a quick ad break, and we're, when we return, we should be able to get you guys back into this game. So brace yourselves with us as we try to get back into this and get this all resolved so these players can have a fair match. We'll be right back.
only $14.99. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy. All right, so we're back. We're getting things underway. Uh, the disconnect issue that happened where a player wasn't even loaded into the game has been resolved. And uh, player wasn't and in the game, then a caster wasn't in the game. <laughs> well, they didn't know about that one, so no, we weren't going to tell them about that one. But, but yeah, Forecourt did not load in, seeing as he decided to bring it up. Yep, it's all me throwing <laughs> me under the bus here, guys. Uh, totally my fault, but I, I am watching I wasn't a spectacular gonna say it, ad from Band about a raid <laughs> starting, so it's it's all worth it. <laughs> but either way, we are loading onto the fold now. Hopefully, all six players load in this time. Woo! Uh, yep, we see all the names there. So and I can move my camera. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. But we are going to be getting underway, and is now Art of the Throw taking on the side of exodial x all right so we still haven't figured out what the exodial x part actually means hopefully they'll show us in the spirit of their play but as they come out here into the lane it's going to be that saw with that book as we did mention a little bit before and uh, bacon i do believe we did say that it's probably going to be that crystal saw yeah most likely crystal saw uh it it just makes the most sense and it's Arguably one of the stronger uh, picks you can go, but against Fuji, he's taking a good amount of damage, but he's dishing out plenty of it as well. And the trade actually ends up being relatively even. Yeah, again, you know, Celeste with her range, with those Helios, the fact that Saab, when he spun up, doesn't really, really have a lot of movement ability to him. Uh, they should be able to trade out, you know, basically back and forth pretty nicely. Maelstrom earlier on should really just focus on the last hit so he can keep that sustain. He will keep that pressure up against Fuji. Well, hopefully that will allow either this Catherine or this Lance to get something going because he does have that uh, roadie run. He doesn't have the suppressing fire, mm -hmm. so they can't quite combo anything until level two. Yeah, now I'm actually a little bit surprised to see that it is Fuji on the Celeste because Fuji has typically been uh, the jungler for this team. So Fuji and Starboy actually kind of swapping roles here for this split. Wants we'll to see if it works out. Maybe it's just uh, you know they feel like Starboy is the better Kestrel player, or maybe uh, they've just actually fully made that swap. Well, I think at this point you could probably put Fuji anywhere. Fuji does have experience in lane, in the jungle. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it could literally just be saying Starboy. Okay, he's a bit more comfortable on this pick. Uh, in the jungle, we'll draft around that. Human just picked up the fin. You said you know, this is sort of their favorite going forward. They are getting pushed in the lane. Here comes Starboy, though. We can have that stun to just muck him up a little bit. And Tio is going to get out of that one, no problem. But because they are doing such heavy you know, uh, lane pressure at this point, Bacon... Moral, if he comes in with a good, uh, you know, good impale on top of Fuji, that could actually be trouble. Yeah, it very well could be, but not going to be happening this time as Art of the Throw, they're able to sniff that one out and they back off accordingly. So, the you know, farm just going to stay pretty, uh, pretty much even. A minuscule lead is there for the side of uh, Exodial, actually, now that his lane is getting pushed in. Entire sentence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how close it is. Like, just one wave of minions can flip the gold lead, so. 2,000 or so there to go spend there for Maelstrom, so he's finally going to head home. A uh, little bit of shopping speed from Fuji as he does come back into lane. Nothing really out of the ordinary for their builds. Does look like crystal and weapon on both sides. Triple blades, though, for Moral. He's just going to chunk out Starboy a little bit there. Humanist with the reaction. Starboy hits the boots. They're not going to get pursued, but Starboy's boots now going to be down 140 seconds. 
Yeah, it's going to be a long cooldown before that activation is available again, but they're going to find Mora coming in towards the lane, but they don't get the uh, quite the pick they were looking for. Yeah, you need to have a really nice quibble uh, in order to set that one up. Moro, unfortunately, whiffs with his impale there as well. Maelstrom is going to prioritize farming out. Moro, they're going to be trying to go on top of Humanus, but he's just going to resist. He can't stun him up, only maybe slow him down. And we will just bounce for now back to our respective sides here, Big. Yeah, they are just going to be resetting and seeing what they can find. Both teams actually going still very even here in the first four minutes. But uh, it's to be expected, you don't always have a huge lead built up after just four minutes into the game. So Kestrel and Lance going to be potentially meeting there. Nope, Starboy decides to back off, but he is going to steal away these forward shop camps. So you know, every little minor victory you can take is important. Yeah, the little bits will add up in the long run, especially if you can keep doing it again and again. Teo going to go a little bit aggressive here in lane there with Maelstrom, but it is going to be a 3v2, so they decide better of it, and they did not get the better of the trades either there. So um, you can see Fuji is trying to just do some combo damage here on top of Maelstrom. They do get that core collapse off. There's the suppressing fire in answer, but Fuji has the fortified health coming out of Humanus. So it's, uh, again, a bit of a better trade here for the throws. Yeah, it uh, is slightly better, and especially if, being the fact that it's you know two on three and they're slightly Ooh, coming out ahead. But Humanist nice. eats a lot of damage, one shot, one kill. He's gonna just go a little bit wide coming out of the jungle. So really, not much to be had here still. As Humanist does get back, finishes off that Fountain of Renewal very early pickup on that. However, To Jack does have enough gold for his own when they do decide to roam down to the shop or recall, whichever comes first. Maelstrom going to be going back as well. You can see uh, Shatter Glass first item there. And uh, it's, again, things are going to just kind of continue this way until one of these teams makes a very aggressive move. Fuji starts off with the energy battery, has a few crystal bits there as well, has been going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the farm, so not really a big advantage in lane from either side, but Maelstrom picking up that Shatter Glass. You know, if we can land some combos here on top of Fuji, a suppressing fire for a slow, you have the Lance, you got the, the Catherine, there's a big front line for this saw in order to get some of these combos off. I mean, they're going to be hitting pretty hard. At the same time, Fuji, he's going to go a bit more defensive. He realizes one stun and he's out. Fuji, however, is just going to have to immediately use that because he's getting jumped on. It is 2v3, though. There is no saw. I'm going to have to lay down that suppressing fire. Now he's going to look for that uh, hook. And, well, the dagger maybe. But Maelstrom now, he is on the wrong side of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Maelstrom could be in some serious trouble here. So they're going to chase him down into their jungle. And being the crystal saw, there really isn't even an opportunity to try and steal away the camps just to make something uh, that death a little bit more worthwhile so starboy gonna get first blood on the game and that's gonna be good news for art of the throw so fuji prioritizing defense there uh he you know, definitely kind of came out ahead on that one with that reflex block he wasn't locked down nearly as long and turning into the 2v3 as they did art of the throw you know a little bit more cohesive there so they do pick up that first blood maelstrom confused me a little bit by trying to go for the dagger early i expected the suppressing instead but either it wasn't up or he didn't think of it either way you know what's done is done here bacon so one zero as fuji goes down a bit low here yeah they fuji getting dropped very very low and pale not quite gonna connect the uh fountain does get popped by humanist Ooh. yeah it's uh that was very very close for fuji but with the Double reflex side. block and the fountain will be okay however now they're gonna be re-engaging Oh, Tio, well, he's going to get the silence off. Not much humanist can do about that one. And it's just enough to bring Starboy down into the kill zone. They pick up a double there for the Saw as well. Lance is going to go real aggressive on this. Tio even moving forward. Fuji really wishing he held on to that snipe right about now. But Tex, you know, that's going to be some kills for Exodial. Yeah, absolutely. A couple kills going over. And you see if they can take advantage of this situation. They've got actually a 500 gold lead. So Exodial is actually doing quite well here against Art of the Throw. And well, it's uh, I, I'm kind of surprised that we've had a uh, an actually like really good game thus far in the first round. Because typically the first round matchups are pretty heavily one-sided. So the fact that it's been very even is uh, a pleasant surprise. 
Fuji's farm finally does pay off. That was a little bit of a contributing factor in the fight. He was a bit underpowered, uh, at least compared to his counterpart there. But he does get that broken myth. Did go into the reflex a bit earlier on, remember. But he also has a void battery to go with it here as well. So second item, you know, maybe the 10-minute marker. So it's a little late for a first item here for the lane. But as I said, you know, the, um, that could be a big reason why Tex was able to pick up the kills as they did. Yeah, they... Uh... A little bit of burst, a little bit of extra damage coming out, and we'll see if uh, Art of the Throw can rebound off that again. It's not a devastating hit that they just took, but, you know, as far as momentum goes, that definitely puts the ball in the court of Exodial. They've definitely got to be feeling good. Maelstrom, five seconds until that ult does come down. We are still looking for some of these impale combos. The core collapse is just not hitting. We've already used the hook from Humanist. He's, they tried to do the combo. It didn't work. Right now, Art of the Throw, they're coming down low. We're just chunking them down. Teo to follow up here with Mora. It's actually uh, Teo Chak taking the damage. Mora doing the damage. But now it's going to be a snipe there on top of Maelstrom. Are we going to get that uh, solar beam to go with it? Yep, Fuji. And there's the solar storm. Does cleave too. I don't think Exodio can really stick around too much longer here. Hey, Humanist going to be trying to pull them back in, but Fuji, he's the one who can't stick around much longer as he is going to drop. Great heads up play by Exodio, recognizing, you know, they just threw out their two big ultimates. There's really not a whole lot else they can follow up with. Fuji was incredibly low on energy. Humanist was as well, and Starboy, the last they had seen, was very low on health, so... A great job by Exodial taking advantage, reading the situation, and making the play happen. See, if I had known that Starboy wasn't there, me personally, yeah, I might have made that same call. But if they didn't know that Starboy was there, that was a very gutsy way to go. I mean, making it into that 2v3, picking off Fuji, yeah, brilliant stuff. Big credit to them. But Starboy being there might have made the difference. And now uh, Art of the Throne just starting to slip behind a little bit here at this point. Yeah, uh, it's definitely... Going to be perhaps a hit to the mental state of Art of the Throw. Obviously, you know, these we know these players, they're not really the ones that are going to tilt off of, uh, you know, 10 minutes into the game having three deaths and being just slightly behind in the gold. But, you know, if this continues to go this way, if they're just continuously unable to find the kills that they've been trying to get, it can impact you. But there's that there combo. Yeah, who needs, a, who needs a core collapse? Just have that camo ready to go. And that was an instant stun. Nothing really for Mora to do there. Teo Jack does get sniped. That double global really coming out strong for Art of the Throw that time. You know, one in three, I guess, at this point. But yeah, as long as you have that stun for Mora, not much he can do about it. He's not even going to go into a reflex. He is just looking to... Oh, I was looking at the wrong person, sorry. Maelstrom does have that reflex, good, because he's going to need more of those coming down yeah, the line. Mora doesn't have, or does have one as well, so uh, everyone actually, except for Tio, has it. Ooh, that gold payout, it was a uh, text, or Mora coming very, very close to being able to get in there in time for the steal, but not quite. However, Fuji taking down extremely low, going to be running this fountain of renewal. Starboy trying to make a play happen on the backside. Oh, Maelstrom, he catches him, but Mora, he's already used those boots. He thought perhaps that Fuji was going to be the target instead. Uh, he kind of wishes that he held them there for Starboy. We'll get at least a steal here on the backs, but Fuji, Starboy, and Humanist all coming down. Teo Chak just too far away at this point, so instead he just turns it around. He's going to look for those kills. Maelstrom can't hit Starboy. He has that active camo up, so Teo Chak instead will make that one happen, but now it's not looking so good for Exodio. It's just this Catherine, she was nowhere to be found early on. And Tio Chak is going to be able to get out of there safely. Humanist and Fuji not really having enough energy to try and go for that kill. But, like you said, it's slowly starting to turn back around for the side of Art of the Throw. 5-4 to four now on the kills, and all of a sudden, they've got themselves a little over a 1,000 gold lead as well. Yeah, a big part of that is, of course, uh, you know... Extra kill, that's great, but it was the gold mine. They were able <laughs> to get the kills and then the gold mine, and that's something that we're not really seeing a lot of right now. I mean, there's not a lot of invasions going on, not a lot of capitalization on jungles. It's simply, you know, get kill, counter kill, reset, rinse, repeat, and that's why it's been so close until now. But yeah, a little bit of a lead for the throws. That's good for them. Two pieces there on Fuji, and perhaps a little bit more with this next fight ramping up. 
Yeah, let's see if they can make something happen, Fuji, with the Broken Myth and Eve of Harvest. That's a very big power spike for the Celeste. Even Kestrel sitting at Sorrow Blade and Breaking Point. Now you look over at Mora, just has the Sorrow Blade for completed Tier 3s, and Maelstrom is actually Broken Myth and uh, Shatterglass, so a lot of damage can come out there. Nice block. Yeah, but it's only going to be on top of Chio, but that's enough for a kill. Cleaving right through. Mora had no chance on that one. Uh, sorry, no, Maelstrom had no chance on that one. Mora now still running for the hills, but we've already used the hook. Humanist can't bring him to bear. But again, that combo, you know, in the bush, you can't see it coming. The reflexes, they're not on time. They're not on point. Teal went down, did not use uh, that fountain. That's a big detriment to the team fight. Yeah, Teochek also not having a reflex block is another big detriment as, you know, Maelstrom was able, give credit where credit's due, Maelstrom was able to block the Forced Accord and, you know, almost got out of there alive, but a great job of backpedaling by Art of the Throw in order to kill the Saw during the roadie run. It was actually just about to connect with Fuji when he went down, so... Very, very close to getting that big chunk of damage. Unable to actually find it, though. You can see the strategy, though, that Art of the Throw is employing. You know, Humanist, he's very likely to get that third point in that anchor uh, mm -hmm. right now because, again, they scout out, they move up, they're in a bush. Starboy, he's going to throw down that camo when we throw out the hook. Boom, done. If you catch anybody with the fish, you're good to go. Instead, well, there's the camo. Core oh. collapse. Nice stuns after the hook and a quick double. Is now going to be Exodial with Teochak running for his life. Gets uh, not sniped. There we go. It is sniped. A little bit of leg on my device. 682 bacon. It's no joke right now. Yeah, absolutely not. And that combo is just working so incredibly well. It's the third or fourth time now they've been able to pull it off. That's why this composition is so strong. Because you just get a forced accord into an active camo, into a core collapse. Like, that is just into a quibble. Uh, it's just a non-stop train of crowd control and there's nothing you can do about it yeah that level eight quibble serving well here for humanists as he is now level 10 does have uh, the treads has the fountain and the crucible so i mean he's pretty much just the the dream right now when it comes to those rooms just going to take a bit of a knife off the scale but it was deflected not really too much damage instead look at exodio they're looking for a fight they're saying fuji's uh, pretty much bait at this point but teo has been taking the damage humanist thinking maybe he's going to quibble in fact just actually throws it does bring back maelstrom though threaded the needle on that one bacon yeah, one shot and solar storm are available with teo being so low Boom. one shot is going to be all that starboy needs for the double kill and that's finally going to be the first turret of the game going down 16 minutes in kraken is available and hard of the throw they're going to go start it up there's no globals. The only way that a steal is going to happen is if Mora kind of comes through. And you can see Fuji. He's in this bush. We got these scout traps up. There's no way that this is going to be a steal. We can even see that Mora is just not even going to attempt it. Not really a lot of vision out there from both sides. They've actually been uh, popping quite a few traps back and forth. We do got one down here for Blue just guarding kind of the, the back door access. But nothing on the map for Red right now. And if you look at the itemization for Art of the Throw... You can kind of see an issue that is indicative of one of the reasons why I'm still not a huge fan of Lance, and that is they really don't care about his damage. Everyone has shield, nobody has armor items because they really just aren't worried about Mora's damage. And that's because we haven't really been able to combo it here from Exodial. So, I mean, Mora right there, he just jumps in on Fuji. At the same time, Maelstrom ran away. They're going to get cleaved down by these ults. And with the Kraken pushing in, there's just nowhere to go. Maelstrom stops, turns around, gets put down for his trouble. No suppression fire is going to be uh, tolerated here from Art of the Throw. They lost out Starboy, but they got two. And with the Kraken pushing in, I'm not going to say it's game, but this is going to be some massive damage on top of those turrets. Yeah, this third and final lane turret is going to go down. Kraken still has well over half of her health, and Fuji thought about leaving there, but then realized, you know what? We can probably get some good damage onto this turret, or you know, maybe not. Just kind of going to walk Kraken into it. Humanist though wants to get some extra damage down. Throws down that quibble, and they're going to get at least one of these turrets. I don't think they're going to get the second one, but Kraken doing some serious work, taking down three turrets for the team. 
yeah, as I said, some pretty uh, spectacular damage and some pretty spectacular money to go into uh, the pockets here of Art of the Throw. A little bit of a throwback there for Exodial. They pick up 1,500, but it's still about 5,000 or so ahead. And those two items about to be a third here, as it looks like Starboy looking for that second Sorrow Blade coming up. Fuji's into the third with that Frostburn as well, and he just picked up Tier 3 Boots to boot. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's looking good. The throws, you know, they got some vision down. Humanist is using that contraption, keeping an eye on their opponents. And with one turret down, an ace could be game over. Ace very well could be game over. Or, you know, let's see what are the throw. They're going to move up here. I don't know if they've been spotted just yet. I don't believe they have. Uh, however, they know where the side of Exodial X is. Boom. One shot's going to come out. Now they know that they are on the wrong side of the fold. Yeah, and just again, look at the power of that Frostburn going in. Maelstrom, he's going to get that knife off, but he's already down so low. The Solar Storm to go through, and there's no more Catherine. No activatables used, and now that is just going to be it for Exodia. One, two, and three, falling over like dominoes here, Bacon. And part of the throw, you know, they're really good engage on their part. Yeah, and for Exodia, I mean, you, I like the idea to play forward like that, but they had no vision in the back of their jungle to be able to spot where Art of the Throw was, so they just end up getting out rotated. And with that ace, there's only one turret left, and now, now there's zero, and Art of the Throw is going to take the victory here in game at number one. All right, GG, well played. Art of the Throw, this is actually the first time I've actually gotten them to see a win with my own eyes here, Bacon, believe it or not. Uh, but, you know, it started off well. Maelstrom in lane going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fuji with that saw. It was looking good, but the combination of Teochak and Mora, like, with this, this saw... Need to set up for it, but there was very little combos actually going down. Mm -hmm. And even then, it was like Teochak went in, then maybe Mora, or maybe vice versa, but maybe Maelstrom was running away at the same time. The communication needs to go up a notch here. Yeah, the composition they had is actually a very strong composition uh, with the suppressing fire, and then you have Lance and Catherine being used to but keep a target through. in the suppressing fire. But like you said, you have to all three engage at the same time for that to work. Yeah, and so, so again, you know, maybe in some of their practice matches this worked out well, but it kind of fell apart here and under the throw. Every time that, that hook is up, they throw it out. It's either a core collapse, it's a camo, sometimes a stun, level 8, the quibble, another stun on top of that. It was basically bread and butter from there. Yeah, so, game one in the books, Art of the Throw and Exodial going to look to regroup and do it again because these are all best of threes here in the challengers for this season. Best of threes, but double elimination. So, you know, going down here is, does not mean you're out of this tournament yet. Uh, you guys still have a chance, but you don't want to have to fall that soon. Uh, pretty pretty close game, early game, actually. i really impressed with uh, Zodial thus far. We'll see what they could do in game number two. We are going to take a quick break, but when we return, we will be back here for game number two of this first series of the first round. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing Vile Dragon. Well, let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. 
So try band today. Band. Be together. Welcome back, everybody. We're here to get into the game number two. This is Art of the Throw versus Team Exodial. And uh, we are about ready to start into this draft. Uh, it looks like Tasty Bacon and Four Court are ready as well. So without further ado, guys, let's get going. All right. Well, <laughs> going to be banning away the Kestrel here right away by Exodial. And there goes the Lyra. So... Who knows what the first pick could be? You could see that Lance get prioritized. Could see Finn. Uh, there's the Taka available. There's a lot of power picks still out there. Well, and uh, you know what? What's it going to be? Last time it was a saw up first. Might have been a little bit more of a mistake, but uh, they're going to try once more here with this Lance. Could be that carry. Could be that Rome. It's a very nice neutral pick. Uh, we'll have to see how the plan unfolds from here. Yeah, well, Lance uh, coming through again will be answered with an Adagio for the side of uh, Art of the Throw. I feel like uh, Adagio has been a very common pick, especially with Black Feathers, who has also been a really common pickup as well. And Vault, well, there's the Black Feather Hover. Let's see if they actually lock it in for the Ozo. I it is going to be the Black Feather. <laughs> okay, so Ozo you never Black really Feather know. something, we, man. We've actually seen a couple of Ozos the past couple days. It has not won, but you never really know if the Hover is actually going to be picked when it's Humanist on the team. Yeah, I know, man. I know. One day, <laughs> one day that monkey will get that golden banana, but today is not that day. So it is going to be that Black Feather, and Black Feather, you know, it's almost feels like forever since we've kind of seen him in, quote, the meta, right? But having this kind of old school comp coming back into it you know it's, uh, an arden a catherine a finn just it's bread and butter there i think for art of the throw at this point yeah uh, well the sky pickup is uh something different for the side of uh taka that was the ban last round if you do recall yep taka was the ban for art of the throw and now it's coming through so I, I'm not sure about Taka into the Adagio and Blackfeather. Like, I, I'm not too keen on that. It will be Arden as the final pickup for the side of Art of the Throw, and Humanist is going to be running that one. So, uh, we'll see, it looks like they are going to stick to Fuji in the lane with Starboy in the jungle. Now, it's going to be really funny if Mora here goes into CP Taka, and then he loses to Starboy, and then I can just keep telling Starboy that CP Taka doesn't work. Uh, I, think that, <laughs> I think that would be some pretty fun irony right We've there. We've been but seeing it, actually a lot of CP Taka. <laughs> it's just always going to be the joke. It's just always going to be the joke yep. when it comes to Ling. But uh, Teochak is going to be that roaming Lance, not a roam Sky or anything fishy this round. But Sky into Adagio for Lane. Maelstrom's going to have his work cut out for him here. Absolutely is. I mean, the Adagio, while it has seen uh, some nerfs in the past couple patches, a minor buff in this patch to the health, but that's if you're going to be running as a roam. I don't think Fuji's going to be picking up too many health items, but uh, it's still a very strong and very enabling pick, especially with something like the Black Feather, who's going to get into the thick of things. You throw down that heal and then just put on the buff and start tearing through opponent's health bars. Starboy, you're going to be taking a bit of his own health bar down, just uh, kind of uh, cutting it close a bit there, Bacon. But for now, you know, he should be able to pick up both of these healing camps. They'll be fine, but they are not going to win the race to the mid. You can see Teochak and Mora already camping out, but they're not going to be aggressive. And under the throw, they really honestly can go shopping if they really want at this point. Or they can come up. Maelstrom It's really far forward at this point. Yeah, very aggressively, but they aren't really going to be finding much out of that, so... Just can kind of be the rotation up to the lane. Both teams should, both of these laners should know that you know, these rotations are happening. But Humanist going to be going in aggressively, just getting that blood for blood down and uh, backing out. Yeah, and Fuji, he's just going to be okay. Even if he took some poke, he has that heal. He can just activate that uh, that Agent's Wrath and go to town if he really needs to. Already, milstone has been feeling that fire. And when it comes to the last hits again, you know, Fuji, is, he's really just going to be controlling that lane, I think. You know, there's not really going to be a lot of push available to Exodial. Fuji really can just take pot shots whenever he wants with that extra range. It's going to be a little bit more of an uphill battle, I think. Yeah, it absolutely is. Right now, you can see with the... I, one thing I kind of find interesting about the way Art of the Throw plays is 
they split up a lot in the early game. Like right now, Humanist is you know just trying to soak up the gold from both the jungle and the lane, and that's not something you typically see. It's typically either the roamer is you know staying in the lane firmly or staying with the jungler firmly. So it's uh, something a little bit different that I've picked up on from their play. He's the next Flash X. He needs to get those fountains at four and a half minutes instead of five. Uh, you know, <laughs> just got to get all that gold, man. But honestly, there's not really too much that Exodial is doing at this point. They're mostly just keeping to themselves. So, even if, I mean, why not? If he can go get that gold and come back and not lose any, then uh, you're not really going to be that worse off. So, Tio in lane does get jumped, has that Githian wall just to reset some of that aggro. And really not a lot going on here early on in terms of the health here, Bacon, but you know, at least there's some aggression now starting uh, starting up. Yeah, they uh, absolutely are going to be looking to try and kick things off here. No deaths yet, though. No kills. And uh, Teoshek on the roam lance this time instead of uh, trying to have it be a carry. Taka has the storm guard. Still has a weapon blade, but we see a lot of Taka start with just a weapon blade just to get that uh, little bit extra damage on the initial clear. So we'll have to see if it stays as a weapon blade, gets turned into the tension bow, or you know, if they he does decide to go for the crystal route, or even a different weapon route. There's a lot of different possibilities with the Storm Crown build that we've seen. Well, looking at Maelstrom, though, I mean, he's, he's pretty firmly into the CP for the sky at this point, so going into double CP could be a little dicey, because uh, you're going up against Fuji and Humanist, you know, we got shields, we got heals, Starboy has his own built-in dodges with that uh, uh, ultimate of his, so, I mean, I think it could be, I think you're going to need some more steady damage rather than looking <laughs> for that uh, double crystal. Yeah, absolutely. The steady damage is, I, I've always been a larger fan of the weapon Taka builds, uh, except unless I'm playing a BR, that's when the Crystal Taka comes out. But for now, Humanist can get knocked forward, but not really any uh, ability to capitalize on this for the side of Exodial. Yeah, he, he's not the tankiest, but he's not the squishiest, So, and he also has that Vanguard if he really needs, so it's, it's not really too much of an issue here, Bacon. And Humanist has that Life Spring, you know? Again, he's looking for that four and a half minute uh, fountain, just like I was talking about. Does he actually have it? Yeah, he uh, does pick it up Ooh. now, so there you go. Four <laughs> minutes and 27 seconds for the Fountain of Renewal. Fuji going to be trying to deal with this two-on-one for the time being, but Humanist coming back up is going to offer that protection for the later. As I said, it's the next Flash X. Just got to get straight to that fountain from there. Who knows? But uh, we have actually seen you know, uh, contraptions earlier on. If they have quite the gold lead, I wouldn't expect to see it here. But Humanist is keeping you know, nice vision control in this mask mustache bushes. Fuji, again, not really feeling a lot of burn. And Humanist is even able to chunk down Maelstrom a little bit. Be with that fountain with this passive. It, it's not really an issue at all. Yeah, they... Uh... Not going to be too concerned. Humanist again plays very aggressively forward, but it doesn't really matter. Fuji is able to actually output a, quite a bit of damage back. Now Humanist taking it uh, down pretty low, but still has that fountain. And so he's not really going to be too concerned. And Starboy coming in on this Black Feather going to be dishing out a lot of damage, finding First Blood. Yep, gets buffed up, just cleaves right through them. Level 6 is on both the junglers here, but that's not going to be enough for a kill on top of Teo Shack. But still, a kill is a kill is a kill. That's the first blood, and Starboy is going to be able to claim assist on it. It's Fuji actually to take it home. Fuji's been banking up quite a bit again, looking at the 6-minute mark. For now, though, we'll have to see if he goes home by choice or not. Doesn't actually look like Moro and Teo can make that happen, but here comes the sandwich. Mora now in a little bit of trouble. Same here with Teo. I don't think Teo's going to survive, but he is not. That's going to be a quick double right there. Yeah, nice double kill coming through. Well, it's not officially a double kill, but it's two kills for the team as uh, they do grab a little bit more of a lead up to about 1,000 gold. As a result of these plays, it's going to increase a little bit further as they are stealing away this jungle as well. So this is the start that Heart of the Throw we're hoping to have. And well, now they've gotten it. Let's see if they can continue to grow this advantage. And finally, some of that aggression in the jungle will pay off. So again, kill is a kill. Advantage, all good. Fuji does pick up uh, a, little, a little bit late, all things considered. But yeah, he did have the guaranteed cash. He does have that alternating current ready to go. And we might actually be looking into a contraption here early. Humanist has a flare gun. Might just keep it, you know, uh, just because that Tonka can be a little bit more slippery. But we'll keep an eye on what Humanist wants to go. 
Yeah, uh, I would expect there's going to be a contraption coming out from that flare gun. And uh, sooner or later, which is it? I think it's going to be sooner. Uh, I really do. Uh, they're... Maybe human is just humoring me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's going to be a, a pretty early contraption coming out because there is a Taka on the fold. Mm -hmm. Like, that just is always screams oh, get a contraption. Man. But right now, Fuji, oh, he's going to be so low, but manages to survive. And Gauntlet's going to lock in the Taka as well. Boom. The first of judgment. And they find another kill. Art of the Throw really starting to turn it on. Yeah, the Arden combo with Fuji, very nice. You know, Starboy, of course, able to land uh, some of this damage. He is 2 0 and 2, but Fuji just basically auto attacking Maelstrom down to death. It was a nice save from Humanist to make it happen. The Gauntlet did uh, just kind of tear up Teo and his pacing. Had to just wait for it out, but with that uh, Gauntlet into the verse, there's not a lot of safety within that area. Yeah, not really uh, much option for you there. And again, the gauntlet. I I'm not sure if they saw Taka coming or if it was just a, you know, a trying to actually keep the lance away. But it ends up trapping him inside and enabled that extra kill. Look at this, the jump on top of Starboy, it's just not quite happening. Humanist is going to be taking the licks there from that Maelstrom, that CP Sky, just going to be only landing damage on top of that. Arden, Teochak, maybe on the wrong side of that attack. He is actually going to be coming down low. Fuji, he's ready to go. He has that item and a half. He has the reflex block as well. Humanist is going to drop to his knees. There he goes. He now finally falls to the floor. And Maelstrom, that's a scout trap he drops. It is Starboy still to survive. Fuji is dead in the water. Starboy looking for the kill on top of Mora. Can't quite find it yet. Maybe we'll just be happy enough to take down Shaq. Maybe we'll pick up a double. He gets one, and he does pick up both. That's going to be the ace for Art of the Throw. Yeah, the ace coming through and only losing out on, uh, what was it, two members there? Yeah, both the... Uh, three. Yeah. yeah, Fuji and Humanist going down the end, but Starboy, lone man standing. Gets the ace. Those ace buff minions going to do some solid work on the turret. Not quite enough to bring it down, but it allows Starboy to also go in and steal away a little bit more jungle. The gold lead has grown to one and a half thousand in favor of Art of the Throw. And well, that's a tension crown for Starboy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did go into the, the crown first, but he just mm -hmm. picked up the tension now. It uh, doesn't actually look like we're going to see any kind of tension out of Mora, which is sort of what we were more expecting. Let's, uh, not entirely too sure which way he's going to go, if it will eventually just be uh, a breaking point or something else. Doesn't have a lot of defense to go with it, but he also only has one kill to his name. So whatever he is ending up doing, it's uh, got to come to fruition soon here. Yeah, Starboy has five points in the on point, so has that extra range. Narrowly avoids getting impaled by just blindly walking forward. Nice gauntlet is going to keep them in place, and that is two more kills for Art of the Throw, and they're going to go diving for the ace. Yeah, Starboy is not too afraid of this one. He has Humanist there anyways. He's not going to get that regen, and Humanist, uh, well, he got a little bit of it there. But Starboy should be able to take down Turret with the help of these minions. Fuji did hang on for dear life. Even with the <laughs> trap, <laughs> oh, a little bit of uh, scariness going yeah. on. But Fuji had to pop a block cool. to avoid going down to the turret. That was uh, very, very close. They're playing well. Art of the Throw is playing well. There's, there's no doubt about it. The builds are definitely going their way. The cash is going their way. And, you know, again, Mora. It does look like Mora wants to go into the Sorrow, but it is really starting to drag out. Yeah, it's... I, I actually am kind of okay with gr going for the Sorrow here. Um, after the... You know, because of the way that the game has gone, going for a tension bow right at this point is a little bit too late for it. You're not really going to get the same level of effectiveness that you would typically like to have. Uh, Humanist does get that contraption finished. Finished Fuji has the double item spike for the Adagio of Alternating Current Broken Myth, and that is really a one of the peak item spikes for Adagio. So look for a lot of damage to be coming out of him and really the entire team of Art of the Throw at this point. I think that Humanist, uh, there's really nothing that they need to worry about in terms of a Crucible. So mm -hmm. going from Fountain out into that uh, contraption, I mean, we might even see... Uh, let's see if we can get three for three out of this one, Bacon. We might even see a crown out of him ourselves. But for now, it's going to be that gauntlet. Mora just pushed or walking right into it. Not entirely too sure which way that went, but he does come down low. Starboy cannot tank out everything despite how uh, you know well he is doing. 
So they are going to have to back on out of this one. Looks like Art of the Throw will be denied a kill this round. Yeah, and that was actually very nearly Mora essentially sacrificing himself. Jumped in with the X Retsu. But because of the, you know, X Retsu puts you past your target, it actually put him, he hit the X Retsu and then went right into the gauntlet wall. So that was uh, very close there for Mora, but managed to escape. Humanist just putting out a lot of vision, just making sure that this middle area is 100% under their control. And, well, that's going to be a nice ball oh. right there. Maelstrom and the Taka <laughs> double pop on top of that scout trap bacon. Quick kills could be your first ace at this rate. Well, no, they've already had an ace. Could be our second ace at this rate. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They are going to get the second ace of the game. This is the first clean ace of the game, and they're going to turn their attention to the gold mine as well. Infusion coming out for Starboy. He has hit level 12, uh, so why not? As they're just going to be looking to really try and push and punish any movement from Exodial. You see Mora actually picked up an infusion as well as Maelstrom a, a while back, and that's uh, unfortunately not getting much use out of those infusions. Poor Mora, he just gets caught, thinks he's okay, uses the basket and just hides for nopes, but Starboy relentless on top of that. The cooldown reduction paying off very nicely for him, the pierce and that uh, true attack, you know, that, that uh, solid damage. Not much that Mora can really do about it at that point, he just needed to straight out run away, and it didn't happen. Teal, though, did not use any buttons to save him whatsoever, so... Uh, again, I think the communication here from Exodio just a little bit lacking when you compare that to Art of the Throat. Yeah, well, actually, one thing I wanted to mention with the the Taka, you, know, you talked about going into the basket there. Have you seen the uh, the new Taka skin that's been re announced? Oh, did, that, did that get announced today? It got announced and revealed, and the Kaku on the new Tier 3 Taka may be the most fantastic thing I've ever seen. Oh, I'm going to have to go look that yeah, up. Really let's, let's keep the spoilers this... at a minimum here, my friend. <laughs> it's not a spoiler. It's literally on the website. I haven't seen it, so you're going to spoil it for me. Ugh, I need just, to just talk about Just hold on this. to the end of the game, okay? Just, just mute up for like 10 seconds and let me talk about this. <laughs> because it is absolutely incredible. Never been told <laughs> to mute up by my co-caster before. <laughs> It's like, that's the rudest thing you could do to me, bitch. <laughs> Here goes oh. that gauntlet as they're uh, trying to jump on top of Maelstrom. And he is getting chunked down a little bit. That death from above just not going to do anything to Starboy. He is just sticking to his targets. Doesn't even need uh, that Shiver Steel. So that's one. Looking for the second is Teo. Is uh, very likely not to get out of this one alive. Mora will be the sole survivor here, Bacon. But, uh, I mean, it's not looking good for them at this point. Yeah, no, not at all. 17-2 to two in the kills. The Kraken is about to spawn, so they can just rotate on down and start this one up. That seems to be exactly what Starboy wants to do, as uh, they are just going to pick this up, and we'll see if there can be a miraculous steal coming out. Or I, I highly doubt it, but you, you never know. It is always a possibility. No globals gives me very little hope. <laughs> yeah, they would have to fully run in, and they'd be spotted as they do try to do so. Uh, Fuji going to grab that minion mine just to help this push a little bit further and provide a little bit of extra vision. But yeah, Kraken is going over completely uncontested. And Art of the Throw, if they can just go into the lane and have a solid push with Helga at their backs, then... They're going to be taking home the series 2-0. Humanist must be listening to me on some kind of delay somewhere because he is going into a crown. <laughs> He's making me look I think good, it just man. Makes sense. <laughs> like, it, it just makes sense in this game specifically. Like I... there's, They're not really worried about the damage. He's got a Fountain of Renewal for the shield. And Taka hasn't been much of a threat at all as far as weapon power is concerned. So, so why you, not get a little bit self? I'm just... I'm just spouting what's what's naturally supposed to be happening. Wow, thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a surprise. You go from telling me to mute <laughs> up to telling me that uh, I actually know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I knew you were a good friend of mine and big, big <laughs> friends that these guys are. Art of the throw, and look at the protection back and forth. Heels and shields going back and back, and that's going to be that kill as Mora cannot bring down Fuji. Again, well, right, it's going to be Maelstrom. Uh, they can only last so long, but they did finally double their kill score. Exodio, though, has to deal with not only Starboy, but a Kraken now tearing up their base. And Kraken is going to take this turret with just Maelstrom here. Should be able to take a second one as well. Starboy 
finally decides, okay, <laughs> Maelstrom just went to go heal. I no longer want any part of this. Tio and Moira are going to respawn before this turret goes down, but are they going to respawn in time to save the turret? It certainly doesn't look like it, but Taka has that storm crown. Ooh. And so now they are going to just melt through the final portion of Kraken's health. Hey, a 17-minute Sorrow Blade. New record. Uh, poor Mora. He is yeah, underutilized, underfed, and underfarmed. 51 creeps in 17 minutes with 7 deaths to boot bacon. Yeah, 51 CS to the 89 of Starboy. Not to mention Starboy also having 10 kills to his name. Uh, you know, looking at Maelstrom, Maelstrom's actually got pretty good farm number. 146 to 149 on Fuji. So not too shabby from the sky. That's an interesting gauntlet, but it is oh. going to at least lock him in there. And Starboy's just going to jump on top of Maelstrom as quick as he can. Still haven't used that reflex for Maelstrom, and uh, he's been stunned up at least once here. That's a great Githian, but is that enough to bring down anybody? One and two, Tex is just falling, and it's going to be a taco sound. As That's going to be Tex and Mechs all over the floor, Bacon. And Art of the Throw are going to be able to claim a victory here. The first series victory for Art of the Throw that we have been witness to live as Humanist is going to go gift them another kill before the game ends. You know, he was actually complaining about people who do that on broadcast earlier today. What a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> like he, was, he sounded very upset about it, too, when he was talking about it, but then he just goes and does it himself. GG well played over all Art of the Throw, just basically snowballing. By the end of it, Fuji going into the... Uh, after current or uh, the alternating shock, whichever one you want to call it these days. But, you know, basically looking into the four blue items, he had the crucible for the team. Uh, Humanist, I got everything right except the war treads. I didn't exactly get the timing down there. But Starboy, I mean, I was expecting him to go into a Shiver Steel eventually, but. Just kept hold on to that dragon heart uh, for the all game. Yeah, I was also expecting. I was expecting you know the serpent's mask breaking point uh, build from the black feather, but going the 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 tension crown, it actually worked out quite well early on. Towards the end, it looked like he was starting to have some trouble actually securing kills. You know, the damage was a little bit lacking, but uh, the rest of the team was able to pick up the slack. Oh, so Humanist ran into the sanctuary for the kill. Gotcha. I was just, I didn't see how he had died. I was curious what you were talking about right there. I was like, how did they get a kill? I thought maybe a turret explosion blew him up. Yeah, yeah no, he, no, he literally I'll just, he was full health, health and just I'll jumped and ran into the sanctuary. Yeah, 100%. All right, but that is going to be the first game uh, series all wrapped up. Art of the Throw moves on. Very exciting stuff. Indeed, yeah, great game. Uh, definitely a more one side of that second game than it was the first, uh, but great matchups. Art of the Throw, they were the favors, and they do move on, so we will be getting on to the second round as we get ready for our next matchups in just a few moments. We are going to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll be getting you guys uh, hopefully into Noble Pro versus Mutiny. That's going to be an exciting matchup, so stay tuned for that when we return. Fourteen ninety nine. 
Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy. All right, everybody, we are back, and we are moments away from getting into our second matchup tonight, and this is going to be round number two. So a lot of these, these are all teams that have won their first matchup, and uh, they have, you know, not dropped to the loser bracket. They're staying in the winner bracket, but one of them is going to drop, and we're going to find out which one in just a few moments. And of course, these teams are teams that most in the community may be familiar with. Noble Pro, they have been here for some time. They've uh, had their ups and downs uh, as far as being in the Evil Eight, uh, actually making it to life finals at one point. Uh, but now they are here uh, in the Challengers looking to, you know, claim their top seed spot going up against a team that has actually performed fairly consistent in these Challenger series. The last two split, Tasty Bacon, you might remember them. They are Mutiny and their rosters stayed pretty much intact. Uh, so as we get ready for this matchup in just a few moments, uh, looks like we should be pretty close. <sighs> Not too far. You guys should be getting an invite from... Uh, he is. <laughs> Brutal Turtle is like, if we win, you have to follow me on Twitter. I'm like, well, what if you lose? Like, then I'll cry a little. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched the Taka thing, though, there, Bacon. And yeah, that, that little Tanuki. Is that not adorable? It is adorable. But why are the blades coming out of his arms like that? Who that cares? Like, the Kaku is like the adorable waddling Tanuki. It's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Any, the, the, the rest of the skin could literally be normal Taka. The Kaku is an adorable waddling Tanuki. That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, well, it is a good looking skin. Noble Pro and Mutiny, though. Will either of these guys get a Taka? It was a band and then lost today on stream. It's not looking good for the little guy in a hat. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, Noble Pro has definitely shown that, you know, they've got what it takes to compete. Uh, they have a very deep hero pool. Uh, we've seen Van Glorious. Hideous, uh, one of the new additions that we haven't seen him play a lot on stream is uh, Drogon. Uh, he is a filling in for uh, one of their one of their sub carries, I believe. I think he's filling in. Oh no, he's filling in for support. Uh, as I just get word here, but then Mutiny, uh, they've had a pretty consistent roster. Uh, Brutal Turtle, though, he's been the kind of the name that's been there from the beginning. Yeah, Brutal Turtle. You know, that's something of a tongue twister there, but uh, he likes to play out some of those more melee junglers if memory serves, Bacon. Uh, yeah, it definitely has the, the jungle uh, presence, uh, typically, but we'll have to see if that continues to hold true. Can I not get invites at this point? Is everybody else in? Everybody else is in but me. Hmm. Yeah, we're actually in draft. <laughs> no, you're not. Shut up. <laughs> no, we actually are in draft. <laughs> Wait, you guys went into draft without me? That <laughs> is so rude, hideous, Bacon. Hideous started. Hey, I'm not the one with in charge of the button. And blame Hideous. So no. Rude. In all fairness, uh, we did kind of start. Uh, uh, blame Dragonborn. Dragonborn is the one who said go, go, go. <laughs> okay, I'm out. Good night. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> See, I think Dragonborn really is quick. just on the disrespect train. Yesterday, he went back. I don't know if you were, if you know, if you saw this, uh, I believe it was during the challenge battles. I was casting with Fuji, and Dragonborn was constantly saying, All right, now we're going to send it over to Four Court Jester and Fuji, and then <laughs> was it or constant? Tasty Bacon and Four Court Jester. It was like five times that night. It may have happened more between than me once. And Fu <laughs> between me and Fuji, it was about five times total. And then he did it like two or three times yesterday with Humanist. All right, two times. Two times yesterday. Dragon's my bestest of friends. <laughs> and so then today, you just got to get that disrespect in on four court. Instead of saying a name wrong, he just goes and starts games without him. <laughs> oh, no, I was kicked out of the party. Promotions these last two days. There we go. Oh, boy. I'm well, just going to restart my clients since nothing is happening. Yeah, you are clearly not getting invites. Nope. Why well, game? Why you hate me? Why? Well, they started uh, the entire reparty uh, just to get it all started again. Hopefully, gotcha. uh, fletch out any bugs, and uh, you should be able to get back Ooh. into this. In Got just it a few now. Moments. Yeah, we're good. So one of the one of the latest claims of Muni uh, from previous splits is that they've been able to actually knock out uh, teams above them. Like they've actually upset a lot of teams. Now they've been seeded a little differently. So this season they actually seeded a little bit lower than they were last split. 
And so now they're going up against the number two seed here in the second round. Um, but they've been able consistently to outperform, you know, uh, some of their other uh, higher seeded teams, higher seeded matchups. So this is, I think, a little bit taller of an order than what they maybe faced in the past. As Noble Pro has definitely shown that uh, they are indeed pro. Uh, they are extremely uh, deep in their hero pool and uh, mechanically pretty, pretty solid. So we'll see if Mutiny can uh, handle this going up in this matchup. But for court, are you uh, all in, ready to go? Yes. No, we're we're hundred percent as able to chat there in the draft. So, uh, yeah, we're good on your word. Noble Pro did try to make it through to the challenges in the last uh, battle set there, but up against Phoenix, they did not do so hot. So, we'll have to see how they do here in Split Two Bacon. Yeah, well, it's going to be uh, starting up here now. They uh, do have a victory already to their name. Both of these teams do. So, they already have taken the first steps on the roads to a potential berth in the challenge battles. And we'll see uh, how they can do here. Kestrel going to be that first pick once again. It really seems like if Kestrel is, is, has risen to the rank, ranks of being like first pick or banned almost every game. Well, I mean, she's just uh, kind of a very strong pick right now. She's uh, Kestrel hasn't really ever been quote unquote weak that I at least I can remember Bacon. But I mean, right now she seems to be on fire. Yeah, uh, definitely doing quite strong. Even got a hot fix nerf like she was that strong and is still being one of the top picks in competitive. So we may be seeing some more Kestrel nerfs coming up in the near future. But there's going to be a pedal. Okay, uh, likely it's going to be Brutal Turtle on it, and that's not exactly uh, up his alley that I recall, but maybe he's been practicing a lot, and we'll have to see the strength of that pedal. On the flip side, though, Noble Pro, after securing into that Kestrel, he got themselves that Lance, the Scarf, to go with it there as well, so that's um, going to be that support Lance. It's not going to be really anything Small else, I don't heroes. think. Yeah, most likely the Roam Lance. I mean, there's unless you're going a Roam Kestrel or a Roam Scarf, which are highly unlikely. Now, the thing about picking Petal is when you pick Petal early, it gives your opponents a chance to counterpick it very heavily, such as with something like, oh, I don't know, a Scarf? Uh, a scarf is very good into Petal, uh, being able, having the ability to clear out those Munions very quickly. Yeah, Spitfires for days. So it is going to be Brutal Turtle on the Bug Pedal. That's actually a few skins going back and forth, but can't say no to that Lance. Looks absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I mean, Pedal is something, it's a pick that I really do like. I think there are definitely some big strengths to the Pedal right now. But like I said, you, it, it really has to be a last pick. Uh, because otherwise you run into a situation where, like, Hideous is just going to be able to clear out those Munions so quick, and that once the Munions are gone, Petal is, especially if you're going Crystal Petal, which is the way to go with Petal if you're not in a BR, like, once the Munions are gone, Petal is essentially just useless. Yeah, and between uh, between the Scarf, between Kestro, between Lance, I mean, there's definitely a lot of area of effect abilities that can kind of wreak havoc. So we'll have to see how it all goes. It's going to be Ringo up in lane with Port Coven. Uh, Mjorn is actually going to be sticking here with Brutal Turtle. But look at this, Dragon just going to go real ham real early. And uh, not entirely too sure he's going to get the better of the trades out of that one. But here's Hideous just coming down, not from an angle you might have expected. Mjorn's going to be the one to burn down. It's being glorious with the arrow in the back to pick up the kill. And that is just going to be leaving Mutiny down a man. Yeah, they are going to be giving up that first blood. And, and right now, Noble Pro looking to continue to chase in onto Brutal Turtle. Doesn't have any energy, doesn't have any Munions, and it doesn't have any health. As that is now a second kill picked up. The rotation from Hideous to make that aggression happen was uh, pretty much just flawless at that point. Drogon, I really expected him to actually drop in that last fight, but he took the the majority of the hurt, and then with that flank coming in from Hideous, you know, two kills, they steal out the jungle, and already putting themselves on the map in terms of gold. This is a good start here for Noble Pro. Yeah, uh, Noble Pro definitely off to a solid beginning here. Not really... Uh... They were able to steal away a little bit, but now Brutal Turtle is going to be finally answering a kill. Actually, they're going to lose out on another kill as they did find uh, Mjorn down in the jungle as well. So, 3-1 to one to start things off, and Port Coven 
very, very low on this Ringo. Needs to be careful. Just a single Spitfire connecting <laughs> could be a kill, and that was close to it right there. Needs to go, uh, you know, trying to fish a little bit here from Hideous, but here comes Brutal Turtle to create a little bit of space. Port Coven should be A-OK -okay after this one, and, well, I don't think we're quite in the point yet where Hideous can burn down those monies very easily. Brutal Turtle is able to chase him out fairly uh, fairly well there, so Mjorn's going to have to hold that lane. Port Coven will survive. It is will be a weapon on top of this Ringo. It does look like it's shaping up for a crystal here on this pedal. They are going to definitely be looking for that crystal build. It's, like I said, it's kind of just the standard go-to build for pedal at this point. You can see actually Scout Trap getting put down in the lane. Lots of vision being put down by both teams as Noble's going to steal away the tree end, but now they are going to lose one. A big impale though. Is Brutal Turtle going Ooh. to go down? He will, but it is traded. A double kill going over to Port Coven. Does Hideous think he can take this 2v1? Bjorn has a big stun with his name on it, but Port Coven right into the goop. He is not going to burn down in time. He will actually trade it out for the kills. Bjorn, the only one left unscathed out of all of that one. So three for two overall. A little bit of a better trade to Mutiny after a bit of a rocky start. Yeah, that is definitely uh, a nice turnaround for them. The gold still definitely in favor of Noble Pro, uh, only uh, by about a thousand or so. But it's still uh, after the the rough beginnings. It's always nice to then get a couple kills back in your corner. Brutal Turtle is also going to obviously know that once the alternating current comes out, Ooh. that's when the pedal can start to really do some serious damage. As soon as we saw the lance, it was a trampoline four there from Brutal Turtle. And as soon as he does get that Frostburn, which I suspect will be that first uh, item, I think he's going to be a bit more of a controlling tear rather than a damaging tear. But really nice reactions. They keep him going. Drogon did clean through with a miss. You see him chasing off the scarf up in lane. Vainglorious, though, has actually been wreaking a little bit of havoc in the jungle by himself. Yeah, definitely doing some good work. And there's going to be another kill there. As the dragon actually finds that one onto Port Coven in the lane. So it's kind of a very aggressive game. Both teams going for a lot of kills. Mjorn making a uh, very interesting route back to the lane here. Whoops. It's going to cost quite a bit of health and, in fact, all of it. Yeah, Catherine's have just kind of been really pushed around today, Bacon. Not really some good starts from either side there. But again, Vainglorious picks up Jungle. We have basically free reign in the lane. And that's now Noble Pro looking at a very hurt turret as Mutiny is uh, going to be limping out of that one for a while. I mean, if, if they lose out another fight, Spitfires might cash in early. Yeah, absolutely uh, could be. And Scarf... Like I said, very good against Petal in general. Also, the you know, better Scarf does early on, <laughs> the earlier Scarf hits that late game. Being glorious, though, going to be in some trouble. Yeah, you came to the wrong neighborhood, pal. Buzz, 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 buzz with the Petal. <laughs> uh, but... They are going to be able to pick up the mini mine and the kill. This will also reset the aggression a little bit there on Vainglorious. And five and a half minutes in, he did pick up some early uh, shield. So he's not quite, uh, you know, in that strong form for a Sora Blade by the six minute mark. Yeah, well, I mean, the some of the decision making this game has been uh, questionable this. at best. <laughs> Go so, in, go out, go in, go out. Uh, yeah, very aggressive moves, and but it, it's just kind of a a nature of a very aggressive team composition and, and you know play style is you know, sometimes you go for those aggressive plays and end up finding uh, one or two more opponents than you were initially planning on. Ringo, unfortunately, has just uh, kind of been the lamb to the slaughter a lot here. Doesn't exactly have anything to dodge. And when Dragon goes in, Hideos, he's following it right up. So the combos are real. And they are picking up quite a few kills here in lane. That's putting Port Coven uh, a little bit behind, I want to say. But uh, 44 to the 59 is Hideos. He's uh, just kind of taking control of that lane again and again. Brutal Turtle didn't go uh, Frostburn first. He's going straight damage. Yeah, well, I mean, it's Brutal Turtle on Petal. You typically don't go Frostburn first. It is it is usually the alternating current. Uh, that That's kind of just the standard for Petal. Alternating current is just super important for what Petal is trying to do as a pick. You could see a multitude of options as a second pick. You know, I've seen Broken Myth, I've seen Frostburn, I've seen Shatterglass, and all three of them work. Even Eve of Harvest has uh, sometimes been the go-to choice, so... There's plenty of options for Brutal Turtle to go for the second item. I'll actually be really interested in what exactly he does decide to grab. Uh, Port Coven, also going to be still working towards that first tier 3 item. 
Uh, and even Mjorn, uh, not quite having the Fountain of Renewal yet, is going to have that very soon, though. Actually, next shop visit should be able to pick that up. <laughs> Mjorn's like, nope, stun, walk backwards with shield. But now it's going to be a three-on-three. Port Coven's going to be coming in with that Hellfire off to the side. When he has that weapon, Ringo, he's going to have to motor on out of this one. But Vainglorious does not want to give up the chase. Instead, it's going to be the Turtle now down and out. Hideous and Drogon, if they clear up this wave, that could be a very dead uh, turret there as well. Vainglorious is keeping the rest of them at bay. Not really getting the better of the trades, but okay, maybe maybe those glimmer shots kind of uh, change in mind there. Drogon, he's in position. If he can get that Lance impaled down after this turret, could be a messy situation, but Mutiny aren't going to give him the chance. Yeah, they are definitely going to be... Uh... And right now on the back foot is Noble Pro again stealing away the jungle and Brutal Turtle trying to make plays happen, but that's just, the fact that they picked the pedal so early is just really painful to me. Because I want to see pedal do really well, but when you pick it that early and end up against a scarf, like you just kind of know that it's not going to happen. All right, Flare out. Mjorn's going to find some of these scout traps and rob Noble of some of their vision. They're up 9-5 and about 3,000 gold. They are holding on to a firm lead at this point, Bacon. And we do got that Sora Blade. Vinglorious is ready to go. Hideous has those two items there as well. Good positioning on top of things. The Goop forcing out the trampoline. But again, you know... Brutal Turtle trying to get those minions into the back line, trying to explode them there as well. Drogon, really the only one to take any kind of licks right there. But, you know, Mutiny, I think that's it for them. They can't really aggress, and Mjorn is needing to retreat. Yeah, they have to back off now, and this gold lead has been slowly but steadily growing in favor of Noble Pro as they're going to look to continue to build this. And with the gold miner, that's their next objective. They should be able to take it before Muir can even get here. One shot comes out uh, to help secure it. And, well, that's going to be the gold mine. 300 gold each for Noble Pro. I mean, Glorious, if he was down a little bit lower, it might have been a kill, but we do got some vision on top of the Kestrel, and he's not looking so healthy, but uh, we should start seeing uh, that Aegis soon for him doesn't really look like we're prioritizing a lot of damage out of Vainglorious. Just needs to live through the fights to do said damage. So until then, Drogon has done a really good job as this Lance. I think that uh, the Impales, you know, some of that aggression in lane, it's really kept Port Coven on the back foot. A lot of that has to do with that Impale. Yeah, a lot of uh, effect has come from the Impale. It's been finding uh, members of Mutiny pretty consistently and allowed the other two members to really set up these kills. Uh, looking at the builds, it is Sorrow Blade, first item for Port Coven, very likely going to go into a breaking point. Uh, same thing over on the side of Vainglorious. However, if you look up at Hideous, has the Broken Myth and the Eve of Harvest. It's a huge power spike for Scarf. Makes him very difficult to take down Ooh. while still dishing out a ton of damage. Brutal Turtle just jumped over the wall with the trampoline. And, uh, well, he's in the wrong part of town now this time. So Drogon's going to keep Mjorn at bay. Now we are able to just get that double. And I've been glorious with an arrow to the back there on top of a very, very toasty Port Coven. Mjorn even going to be dropping down low at this one. And this turret is tanking not only uh, three heroes, but as well that creep wave. One shot to go through will not connect. And that is another turret on top of the kills. And Noble Pro, basically uh, kings of the jungle at this point. Yeah, the gold lead is shot up over the past couple minutes as it's now looking at a uh, 6,000 gold lead or so. And pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, definitely pretty good. 11 minutes in, you're, they're sitting very comfortably in the driver's seat of this one. So Mjorn started off with one of those contracts. Uh, he did go into the Iron Guard contract, and, you know, has a fountain on top of that, a flare gun. Now, there's not really too much of a need for a Crucible, other than just really Lance and that Impale. I wouldn't expect to see too many camos uh, early on. So, going into what I have to assume is going to be a Contraption next, doesn't really help uh, too much in tankiness, I gotta say. But Mjorn, eh, if it works, it works. Yeah, no, it's definitely working right now uh, for the side of Noble. Yeah, that's and... kind of the reverse of what you want it to work. <laughs> <laughs> Like 4v3, oh dang. Yeah, well, actually at that point it'd be 4v2. Quite correct. 
quite correct. But either way, it's uh, Frostburn now going to be the pickup here for Hideous. It's just going to make it even more difficult to escape. Uh, now, one thing I actually need to confirm uh, how exactly the slows interactions work in Vainglory. Uh, I don't know if it's actually stacking or if it just takes... I'm pretty sure it just takes the strongest slow that has been applied. But uh, I'll have to double check that one. Well, Hideous used the boots and just kind of got uh, face checked to do a lot. But look at the triple impale into the burn. That is a toasty flower. And now Catherine is uh, soon to follow this time. It will be Port Coven living through it. But Mjorn, oh man, like Drogon made the plays that time. They're even going to be looking for this ace. But the turret is going to bring down the scarf. Port Coven will survive. Drogon is now uh, going to be making a beeline out of that one because Port Coven. It will actually take him down, given enough time. Vainglorious, though, does take that. The turret, the jungle as well. So I don't know if the sacrifice needed to be made bacon, but it will end up 13 and 6 with multiple turrets in favor of Noble Pro. Yeah, three turrets down, just two left to go in order to take the victory. But uh, as of right now, they're just going to be continuing to... You know, grow this lead, continuing to farm up in the jungle, stealing camps away from mutiny, and just not really allowing them much of an opportunity to get back into this game. Man, oh man. 13 minutes in with 13 kills. It's uh, certainly a good pacing from Noble. And we're really kind of losing out on a window to come back from this bacon because we are going to have that crack in here fairly soon. But more impales like this. Drogon doing good work. Vainglorious perhaps a bit too aggressive. Does drop that Frostburn is there from Brutal Turtle. But again, another impale. That should be it for the uh, Ringo. And he is eventually going to drop. Scarf did burn him down enough. Mjorn, though, will survive. Brutal Turtle looking for maybe a re-engage, but eh, nope, he's just going to go home instead. He will be the only survivor out of this massacre. Yeah, one member left standing, and oh, that's uh, not exactly the best Boom. way to try and win a game, especially no. when you go right into your opponents as that yeah. lone member left standing, and especially, especially when you try and jump over a wall and face plant into it. I just see a cartoon version of Petal jumping into a wall face first, going <laughs> all the way down. Um, good, good stuff there, Bacon. But yeah, that was a very strange idea. Brutal Turtle, I thought maybe he was going to go home, pick up some kind of mega item. I didn't look at his cash. And then he was rushing back out like a bat out of hell. But okay, stun, burn, impale, no problem. That's going to be Kraken now coming to play. Yeah, Kraken will be on the fold. We'll see if Noble Pro decide to try and start this one off immediately, or if they uh, look for a fight first instead. I feel like they could just start it off and you know, tr force the fight to have to come to them at this point, but they uh, don't seem to be terribly interested in that. They are instead hunting down the fight. They're going to find it. And, well, Minion Mine will be the first uh, to fall, but Brutal Turtle just nothing to do up against that kind of fire. Hideous does not have a green thumb. He is not nurturing growth here whatsoever. And Port Coven, another great impale. And Drogon making it happen with the Githian. One, two, and a three. That's a triple kill as Hideous is going to be very happy to take those ones to the bank. Ten and two on this scarf. Three items and enough defense to hold down Fort Knox at this point. Yep, that is going to be the ace, and with mace buff minions coming down the chute, that is going to be the game as the turrets are destroyed. Brutal Turtle is up to try and defend, but again, that whole 1v3 situation, not going to be working out. And Noble Pro, it took a little bit for them to really pick up the pace, but eventually they were able to just kind of uh, get a commanding lead and not look back. Somebody in chat said bacon greater than Monte Cristo. I think that's a really nice compliment. That is. I need to go. Where? Where is that? I need to get a <laughs> screenshot. Screenshot it quick. Go, go, go. <laughs> Mute. Uh, uh, there is, some, there is one here. comment I did just see that uh, I am a bit loud. So, Dragonborn, I don't know if uh, you changing that. <laughs> Well, I was going to leave that one more as a side discussion, but, uh, oh, well, you take your screenshot. Well, I, Noble Pro the viewers there. like to know that they are being heard well, don't and worry. that their voices to too. are type to them while you cast. It messes up with them a good bit. Yeah, uh, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Humanus was actually commenting on that earlier today yeah, about, uh, about your ability to do that and how crazy impressive it is.
Oh, dude, when he does it during Evil 8 and is just like, hey, I'm a big fan of yours, Ford Court. Where can I follow you? Like, you're such a troll. <laughs> what a troll. Dragon, no trolls here. Noble Pro with a clean sweep in game one. Yeah, I mean, it was looking really strong. Not sure what Mutiny's got to do to kind of come back. I mean, I did like uh, the pedal pick, but it just seems like they weren't able to uh, kind of just, like, get any kind of early game going. And then... With a Kestrel, just a lot of damage, able to snowball. Really, that gold lead, uh, it just really took uh, Noble Pro uh, over the top there into that mid to late game. So we'll see if what Muni can do for the second game. Going to have to mix up the drafts a little bit, uh, potentially. What do you guys think? Well, uh, as I said, you know, not quite the green thumb out there on the pedal. Not a friend of the forest whatsoever. We just you're supposed to water the plants, not light them on fire. So I don't think it worked out very well simply because it got picked really early. I mean, Bacon brought this up, you know, pretty much right as soon as the game started. There's just a lot of ways to counter the the pedal there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're gonna jump into the second game right away. Get you guys into the draft, Tasty Bacon. Let's get going. Sorry, I'm busy getting my screenshots. <laughs> he needs a screenshot that he's made of Monte <laughs> Gotta do it now, but Monte Cristo's at uh, BlizzCon, so... Right? <laughs> I gotta... See, I act nice and humble, but I'm actually super, super vain. <laughs> <laughs> Beat into the ego more there, guys. You get a better cast out of it, for sure, so... <laughs> Game number two here, Bacon. No Son, no Celeste. Will we see that pedal repeat? I don't know, but Kestrel will make it through once more. Brutal Turtle... I think is a little bit more comfortable on it this round yeah i mean we'll have to see brutal turtle we'll see what does come out like i said the kestrel first pick again a high priority uh saw being banned because nobody is going to let hideous play saw uh i've actually seen i've seen people say that uh they feel hideous's cp saw is better than pond the original so Wait, that's Ponder actually something I really want to see. Like, I would almost want to see Noble Pro make it into the Evil Eight just so we could get that matchup. <laughs> Let's prove it. And then, so we can get them like at an All Star game and just have it be Saw versus Saw. Like, I just that's the one v one I want to see. Can we get six Saw games, please? SCMC? <laughs> just give us all Saws. That's all we need. Uh, so Kestro into Lance, we got a Taka, perhaps a Samu to come through, haven't seen hide nor hair of him in a while, and uh, we had one Lyra ban today, but zero picks so far, instead, we're going to have a little bit of a blast from the past, you let the dogs out here, Bacon. Yeah, Fortress, I, there's so many picks that, like, we don't get to see that I'm a huge fan of, like, I, I feel like I'm of broken record whenever picks like this come out, because I'm always like, oh, I really actually like this pick, but, uh, no, Fortress is, it's a, I'm a huge fan of Fortress. Uh, it's one of my favorite roamers to actually play as well. Oh, um, it's not, he's not roaming? Or maybe he is roaming. Yeah, Where that's... Lyra gonna go? Lyra's gonna be Brutal Turtle. So is Port Coven going off into the jungle? This is interesting. It's gonna be hideous on that uh, scarf, though. Once I mean, time, you, so. you could go either way with it. Like, the Fortress can roam or be a CP carry. I think it is better as a roam. Uh, the CP carry fortress still does a silly amount of damage. Don't get me wrong. Like, it can. It absolutely can. I mean, just, you know, the other day, Humanist and I were talking about it, and, you know, we had a match where Humanist and I were 2v3 against a team because our third disconnected really early on, yeah. and uh, it was a uh, weapon Vox with a... I was playing CP fortress, and we actually won. <laughs> because it's just, it's actually very, very strong, so... Never underestimate the damage coming out of Fortress. Even as a roamer, the damage can be pretty massive. So keep your eyes on the Fortress. Keep your eyes on the Kestrel. So Fortress brings uh, you know the bleed to the table, the percentage damage. You can stack them up. Uh, the bleed and burn used to be something of a strat, but of course they all have separate teams this round. Uh, at the same time, the healing debuff to come through. Uh, we got one on each side. It is Brutal Turtle in the lane, though. He is going to be that Lyra, and so far he's just throwing curveballs there at Hideous. Yeah, Lyra in the lane is uh, never terribly fun to have to go up against. Whether it's a roam or a carry, because you just know you're going to be taking her non-stop harass all day. 
taking those fronts. Uh, really nice job from Mutiny to not lose them out. They don't really want to go up against this Lance Tonka combo, but with the three of them there, you might have been able to make a case for it. For now, though, Brutal Turtle is just going to come back to lane. A little bit of attack speed, so we should see from him pretty much the standard. Uh, think of him like an Adagio, right? Get that alternating current up and get a kill. That's all you need to do. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and just uh, grab themselves that first kill of the game. We'll see what they can make happen as a result. Not really going to be taking too much off of the first blood, but you know, obviously lots of potential for further opportunities if they can just make a repeat performance. What do you think Vinglorious is going to show us here? We do got that scarf, so I mean, tension shock, ten not tension shock, tension crown. Uh, I don't think we're going to see the aftershock. Uh, I remember when tension shock was actually a thing for like <laughs> a patch. That God, was memories, man. <laughs> those were terrible, terrible times. Oh boy! But thankfully, that's no longer a thing because that burst was silly. But now Taka going to be uh, trying to find some damage onto Port Coven, but. He's not going to get the stun with that active camo. Instead, just plenty of damage, enough to force Vainglorious away. Yeah, the kiting potential there of Kestrel was actually working out very well. Drogon just really couldn't seem to find an angle in, neither could Taka, even trying to, even uh, having the Kaku to chase. Didn't quite work out. They did not get the better of the trade, so they're just going to bounce for now. Brutal Turtle definitely maximizing his shopping every time he does go back down. Doesn't get up that bulwark in time to stop the impale, and he will drop low, but he's not going to go down yet. Yeah, Brutal Turtle still hanging in there. Actually kind of surprised that it threw out the sigil uh, yeah. to forward like that, but... You know, to each their own. I would have definitely used it to heal myself. He chugged his last potion, so... Yeah, he has, he's got nothing, man. Yeah. Now if there's there's a situation being put down to heal. That's, uh... And you can see just how much healing it actually does. It gets him back up pretty much to full. That is one of the reasons Lyra is so frustrating to play against in lane. Because you're like, man, I just hit a bunch of spitfires, we got a lot of damage onto her, and she's full. Yeah, I'll just read some pages from my book, and boom, it's all that damage is done and uh, over with. So yeah, Brutal Toto is coming down low on energy, so if we are going to be making a play, it's got to be something where Noble Pro has gone aggressive, because Brutal Toto is just not going to have the sustain for a little bit more of a drawn-out fight. Vainglorious not looking for a fight from Port Coven either. He is going straight into the backs, though. And I think uh, Coven, yeah, he knows. He, he knows what's up. So he's just going to try to return the favor and go into the other side there. Yeah, that's uh, what they're looking for, but this could turn messy. Port Coven and Hideous, you know, here comes Mjorn there as well. They are going to trade him out one for one. At the same time, Vainglorious and Brutal Turtle just kind of trading blows there as well. Not so bad. Could have actually gone just a 1-0, but actually mm -hmm. getting the kill there on top of Hideous uh, kind of makes up for that. Yeah, it makes it nice and even. Vainglorious is going to be looking to steal away this Treant as well. He is going to take that, so... A minor advantage for Noble Pro, actually, when all is said and done. And Vinglorious uh, did not get his back stolen either. So, yeah, I definitely got to say that Noble kind of came out ahead on that one. Bacon Brutal is going to be heading home. Has stockpiled a little bit of cash. And, yeah, attack speed. He's got the crystal. So we're pretty much on track for an alternating current here. Yeah, it's uh, pretty standard. Uh, I'd feel for alternating current. Lyra has first item when you're going her with a carry route. And for Mjorn, going for the uh, Fountain of Renewal, as is pretty standard for Rose, but Port Coven going to be getting a free trip back to the base. We need to get those uh, those bulwarks up a little bit quicker there, Brutal, because that's twice now Lance has just kind of been able to have free reign. And that's the combo. I mean, this is the combo that worked out well last game. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Hideous on that Scarf, Drogon on the Lance. One Impale just lets Hideous mm -hmm. loose on you. It's a similar concept to going with the CP saw, so it makes sense that Hideous is one that's going to be wanting to run this duo and get this combo going. You get that stun, you get the the root, stop someone moving, and well, that's just, like you said, a free target for the Scarf, but now down in the jungle, Vainglorious is going to be trying to escape here, but runs out of tools and goes down. Now Hideous, that's very aggressive positioning, but has Drogon at his back, so should be able to get out. 
Brutal Turtle actually looking for an invade into the backs, and the mm -hmm. timing is right on time. So we are going to get both sets now going over to Mutiny, and that's going to be a little bit more of a cash swing their way. That's not going to be really a definitive lead either way. Uh, you know, Noble might be up a few hundred gold, but that's very small at this point in the game. Yeah, uh, six minutes in, only having a couple hundred gold lead. Like I said, very uh, almost negligible at this point. Mm -hmm. You can see both laners finishing off their first tier three item. Both junglers looking to do the same. Both roamers have the Fountain of Renewal. And so that's, I mean, the game is pretty much dead even. Inglorious did finish off the Storm Crown, actually. So he has that minor lead, but when you get. Stunned up by the Kestrel, even with low energy, Port Coven has a lot of damage. One shot! Nice. Not quite finding the kill just yet. Port Coven just really trying to maximize the vision here of where Vainglorious could run. Drogon did come through to this one, and Vainglorious will be rewarded by picking up those backs yet again. We do got Mjorn coming through. Port Coven is here. Are they going to go for that fight? Both laners going to be transitioning down here as well, but now they're just trying to turn it right on top of Hideous, and Mjorn, he's going to get that jump. The percentage damage is there. They just need to pop it, and they can't catch up to the little dragon. No kills will go through. And I feel like as soon as Port Coven, actually here comes Drag Drogon, and not going to be, uh, just going to be dissuading any potential turret dive onto Hideous. But I feel like as soon as Dr they saw Drogon come down, like, they knew their camps were going to be taken. I mean, Port Coven was fully backing off. Go to the enemy jungle, like, just make a beeline and take those back camps for yourself so that you at least get something out of this instead it's just free backs going over to the side of Noble Pro. Now they're going to get their own as well, and they're going to get a little bit extra gold advantage as a result. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And mm -hmm. as you said, you know, even if you take out the fronts again and again, those little advantages add up by the end of all things. If you can take out the backs again and again, well, it's not so little of an advantage. We went from just a few hundred to now... Uh, you know, trying to crack that 1,000 mark, and they might even oh. get it here because they are just caught with their pants down here at the shop, and that's going to be a very quick kill. Brutal Turtle is done. Hideous, however, has to deal with Mjorn, and Mjorn will pick up that kill. Not what you expected out of that roamer, but now Port Coven. Could he actually get caught here? Does Drogon have any boots? Now he's already used them. No, he actually hasn't used them, but they're not going to look for the chase. Yeah, and great job by Vainglorious. One of the best uses for Taka. When teams first started doing this, it was super creative, and I was a huge fan of it. Now it's just kind of a you know something you expect. Port Coven, oh, the <laughs> recall gets stopped. Because, I mean, he has full vision of him thanks yeah, to the scout trap. And Drogon is actually going to solo out Port Drogon, or uh, Port Coven. By Port Drogon. Drogon. <laughs> Names rhyme there, but it's like uh, swap it with the letters. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there's Noble Pro are just like they are just feels like they're one step ahead of Mutiny at every turn. Like that play right there is a prime example of it. The the Taka going invisible, scouting out that brush and saying like they saw one person walk into that jungle shop brush. And so he goes invisible, scouts it out, and says, oh, hey, there's actually two of them in here. Throw down a goop and light it on fire. We got ourselves a team fight. Uh, right there, it was actually Vinglorious getting caught, but still not the end of the world for Noble Pro. Despite the fact that the kills are even, they have gained a over 2,000 gold lead as a result. Yeah, and picking up, uh, losing out Vainglorious, that's fine, but they picked up a lot of damage on top of the turret. They're in lane, so again, if something goes wrong here for Mutiny, they are about to lose out that turret. Uh, now you can see Brutal, he's just trying to return the favor here in lane. The rest of Mutiny is kind of dealing with Drogon and Hideous so far, uh, just keeping them at bay. And they got, you know, just, what, a little over half, or a little under half damage. If the turret will stand at just a little bit over half. So five and five, a little bit of cash still to Noble, but Mutiny, they're making some plays of their own. Yeah, they're definitely hanging in there. It's not like th this game isn't, you know, a runaway train just yet. Uh, Noble with that first turret going down is going to get them a lot of gold. So is these kills. Yeah, nice, uh, nice attempt there at the snipe, but you know that's going to be one. Looking for the second here. No, nope, maybe not. Hideous will actually live through this one. Mjorn not going to be going anywhere. They're going to be frying up the wolf, and that's going to be the kill. As we've lost out the Taka, he loses the duel up against Port Coven. So two for one and a turret. Uh, definitely noble pros game right now.
Yeah, the uh, again, unfortunate Vainglorious went down, but they're not going to be too concerned about that because they have this super hyper late game carry in the scarf who has been proven to be an extremely effective late game hyper carry. Uh, Hideous, whether he's playing a crystal saw or a scarf, it doesn't seem to matter. Like I said, the, the concept is still generally the same. You just don't have that huge burst execute when you're playing as the Scarf. Now, Scarf did just pick up second item just uh, about, like, I think right before the 11 minute mark. It's a little bit later than I would have wanted, but it's still in really good form, especially since he's now been able to clear up most of the third. So once he uh, does get that Frost Burn, it's it's going to happen before Kraken at this point. Then we're in a good spot, but Vainglorious, not quite so. Fort Coven will get traded out. Brutal Turtle, all right, going to get that Bulwark, but I, you need to be running away. And with that portal, that will seal the deal. Brutal should live through this one, and I'm not entirely too sure anybody else will drop here, Bacon, but you can't, tr you can't have a Scarf full front in your face with a goop, with that fire. It's just too much. Yeah, Vainglorious uh, did find the kill onto Port Coven, so that was why that situation happened. Oh. Goldmine is going to be stolen. Yorn picking that one up, and Drogon very low, but here it comes the Dragon's Breath, one and, and just two. look at the damage being done. Once those breaking the broken mid stacks are built up, like it's just. There's not much you can do about Scarf. Insane damage, man. Yeah, they lost out that gold mine. Really nice steal as Mjorn kind of uh, that one one bite fortress. Is that it right there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, almost. I think he actually did a few auto attacks. But either way, he got the gold, and that's going to be you know great for Mutiny. But still down 3k and two more kills going over to Hideos. Now secures that Frostburn. Yep, Frostburn coming through, three item Scarf. This is the scary levels of damage, as if it wasn't already what the Broken Myth, but uh, it's just going to get worse and worse as the game goes on. As you can see, just that, that minion wave just gets immediately exploded into, into a it. shower of coins, and that's just going to be the way this one goes. I do want to see some a little bit better uh, positioning from Vainglorious. Uh, has gone off on like these solo missions multiple times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, well, if there's nothing else on the map to take, why not? You don't want to no. go pushing too far up in the lane. There's nothing in your jungle. Your opponent's jungle is just cleared as well. So there's the only thing left to do is just get yourself that tiny gold payout. Hey, if it if it works, it works, man. So tiny gold, big gold, whatever. It's still money in your pocket at this point. And uh, Bacon, you know, Vink Glorious, he did go into the crown. He had the tension bow. He's had those for a bit. But a breaking point after that, we typically see more towards armor or shield or crucible, fountain, something like that. But breaking point. Well, we'll have to see how that works out because we do got these puppies. The puppies do show Vainglorious kind of behind them. Mutiny did try to get in position for it. All they ended up doing is losing half of Coven's health for it. Yeah, that is uh, not really what they're looking for <laughs> to be completely honest but seven to ten on the kill on the scoreboard and still about a hovering around 2000 gold lead mjorn has without that ult available they really need to be careful like the the attack of the pack is such a crucial ability for a team that has the fortress on it that i really feel like you just can't fight if you don't have that cooldown ready to go the gold difference, I think, is biggest seen on top of Mjorn. He only really has that one item. Uh, I mean, he went into the contraption, right? But when it comes to the team synergies, he only has that fountain. Like, we got uh, fountains. We also have the uh, the armor, the, the mains ready to go there from Drogon as well, right? <laughs> so when it comes down to it, Mjorn, like, once he unloads, that's it's kind of always worth it at this point, especially without that ult. But Vainglorious now trying to just, uh, kind of, just a prank, guys, and don't get too worried about it. Here comes Hideous to save the day, but they have lost out Vainglorious, and they're about to lose out Drogon. They might even lose out Hideous, but he does get at least one of these kills. We got those puppies out. Hideous will get the second. It's him versus the pup, and the shield is not going to last. Yeah, and that's one of the strengths of Fortress. As soon as you get that first kill, if the wolves are not dealt with, they start coming in and you know, dishing out extra damage. You know, once you have two wolves on you, all of a sudden like you're bleeding and that bleed is getting popped for the percent health damage constantly. Like It's tough to deal with. And well, in a closed space especially, Kestrel and Fortress Lyra, very strong co uh, combo that they're able to pull off. And 
the later this game goes, I still feel like it does favor the side of Noble Pro because of Scarf. Like, purely because of Scarf. But, if Mutiny are able to be the ones to initiate the fight, if they can start fights on their terms, they can actually very easily just take one of these targets and delete them. Infusions to come out. Uh, triple infusion, actually, all coming out here from Mutiny. Do we got any on the flip? It's just really on Vainglorious. Still on the Tier 1 boots, Bacon. That's, uh, sorry. Yeah, no... There we go, tier two, just as I say it. Thank you, Vainglorious. <laughs> well, Ataka, it's not as bad because he has that move speed from the perk, so. Yeah, but you might have expected uh, with the, the the way that the cash <laughs> was going to see that tier three. But for now, there's, there's the puppies again. Brutal with that portal looking for that catch, and they very nearly do bring down Vainglorious. They do. Uh, eventually get him there with that last curveball, but Mjorn, he's not going to be surviving through this one. Drogon to pick him down, and that's it for Brutal Turtle as well. Much more coordinated out of uh, Noble, despite the fact that Vainglorious caught twice now in a row. Yeah, Vainglorious has kind of been, like I said, positioning has left something to be desired, but it is getting, the slack is being picked up by the rest of the team, so it hasn't really mattered too much. It's something that they will have to, you know, tighten up going further into this tournament win or lose but it's looking more and more like a potential win as the kraken is going to be going down scarf still extremely quick at taking out kraken so they're going to get the unleash everyone is back up but again the fights it's while they have been very close it feels like every single time it is still just slightly in favor of Noble Pro, with the exception of the one that happened deep in the mutiny jungle. Yeah, they've definitely been holding their own and pushing above and beyond. You know, still oh, about 3,000 gold. It's It's been hovering there for a good while. You know, mutiny might have actually found their chops when it comes to the money, but it's just always a little bit too little uh, to kind of gain anything back out of this one. Now with the Kraken pushing in, I mean, that's just going to be it for the turret. How much more will come out of this is a big question. It really comes down to Spitfires and Harass. Yeah, I'm all the turret going to go down, and now there's that Dragon's Breath. And Brutal Turtle is just going to be down real low. He uses the portal, gets to the Sanctuary. He's going to be okay. Vainglorious finally... Uh, Maybe looking for some stacks on that uh, breaking point. He's sitting at one. Never mind. He's sitting at zero. And Hideous just uh, not not going to be going too far with that uh, uh, bulwark. That was it for him. Now Mjorn will drop. He will finally uh, go down ten stacks of Inglorious. The highest I've seen him yet, Bacon. But with the Kraken here, this is all wrapped up, sir. Yeah, Kraken and of course the Storm Crown helping to burn through the turrets even faster. And now, with it just being the Vein Crystal, no one's going to get to respawn. And it will be Noble Pro taking the victory and moving on in the winner's bracket. And keep in mind, this is a team that, you know, last split made it very deep in the tournament. They, uh, I believe, the uh, number... They made this it... Was in... This was second round. Yeah, this was round two. Yep. But I'm, I'm talking, like, split one. Oh, they okay. made it, uh, I believe they were in the winner's bracket semifinals. Mutiny was? Or Noble, Noble Pro? Noble Pro. Yeah, Mutiny didn't make it top eight. I think uh, yeah, no. I think we did actually hit top eight there with the Noble. They've, again, they, these are names that have been... I, I know they made top eight. I'm just trying to remember yeah. if they were in the winner's bracket when they got the top eight or if they came through the loser's bracket. But either way, you know, this, this, is, is, a, boy, this is a very strong team. And so for Mutiny, you know, nothing to be ashamed of in this loss. They fought very well. Uh, it ended up being a fairly close game at the end of it, but and they still have a chance. It is double elimination all the way through, so they could come from the loser's bracket and still have a shot at those challenge battles. Hideous went 10-2 and two, game one, went 10-4 and four game two, but lots of blue throughout. It's all about the Purple Master Race, though, Dragon. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing a lot of storm crowns and contraptions in that game, but we've seen, of course, in the meta for quite some time. So no surprise there. Uh, yeah, I mean, Noble Pro, I think the second game really did a great job at showing that they uh, were up to snuff. First game was a little rough uh, early, but both games pretty decisive there as they really kind of came together. Nice gelling.
All right, we are going to actually jump into another game that is going on uh, right now. They're actually in game number two, uh, in round number two, and it is Team Enix going up against, I believe, uh, OMG Nexus. Uh, we're going to take a quick break as we try to get into that game right here, so uh, don't go anywhere, everybody. We will be right back after this short, short break. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy. Welcome back, everybody. We are going to be jumping into another game in round two. This game has already started, or this series has already started. It is OMG Nexus versus Team Enix. Uh, game number two here, as we get into the draft, uh, it does appear that Enix uh, has won the first game. Uh, and that is true, yes, that is 100%. True. Yep. Gotta confirm that. So, matchups, uh, this is the Team Enix. Uh, you guys have probably uh, heard of them before. Uh, some pretty all-star roster here uh, as we look at. They're definitely one of the top seeds. Uh, so, with that, we are going to jump over into the draft with Forecourt and Tasty Bacon to take it away. You know, Bacon, just watching uh, some of those ads there, that HyperX Cloud Stinger headset looks really comfy. Uh, you're getting the the four court cell started early, huh? <laughs> just saying, just saying, man. <laughs> just saying. All right, comfy into this one. Enix is up one zero. Samuel and Kestrel both out, and this is a first for me. This is my first Gwen I get to cast. Yeah, actually, Vine as well. I have not seen much of. Actually, no. Did I see a Gwen? I think I've seen a Gwen. Well, only you would know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't pay attention. <laughs> They're all the same, <laughs> Celeste, Gwen, Kestrel, all girls. All the games yeah. just mesh into one. All I remember is, like, the picks that I actually like. Um, there's never an Ozo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gwen is a pick that I'm actually not a fan of. Um, yeah, I know it's strange to hear. There's only there's only a handful of heroes that I'm not a fan of at the moment. But I seem to know all of them by heart at this point. <laughs> well, it's because there's only a handful. There's, that's why. But uh, the the Gwen is just while she can be very strong late game, I feel like her early game, like the her she's very weak early on, and like the strength of her late game does not make up for the early game because there are other heroes that have an even stronger late game than she does and don't have as weak of an early game. So, I just, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not terribly keen on the pick. Well, we'll have to see how it works. Grass actually not going to be roaming anymore. That's going to be falling here to Marto and Bladeheart. We've already seen really good stuff out of a Blade Feather today. A Blade Feather, a Black Feather today. Uh, <laughs> Dear Diary Lyra is second of our Lyras today for Ninok. And that's going to be here with that Celeste and somebody stop me here on this tiger. Yeah, well, with the uh, with Marto on the team again, that's a name that we definitely know, as he has been at, on the Evil Eight teams. Well, actually, not Evil Eight, but uh, he has been at Live Championships. That much is for sure. He is a North American champion. 
from all the way back in like last Martin. autumn season. Yeah, I like I like hanging out with Marto. He's kind of a down to earth. Marto, guy. he's a great personality in Vainglory. Yeah. Like he was, he always just seemed like the heart and soul of whatever team he was on because he's just very vocal and just very down to earth. But we are going to be seeing right now just a lot of uh, farm happening and some early aggression here. Perhaps nope, Bladeheart's going to think better of it. Yeah, Marto's a great guy. Unlike that Zeo guy, he just like flat out stomps me whenever I see him. But Marto, he'll actually play with me and you know give me some tips and all that. So <laughs> good on him. But Enix right now, it's up to grass in lane with this Gwen, and uh, there's the Buckshot just trying to keep these guys at bay with a Celeste and Libra combo. And this is going to be uh, a little dicey. You can see somebody looking for the kill, but not enough in the bank to bring down Marto. This is going to be tough, uh, tough beans for grass. I think uh, this early on. Yeah, I really think it is. Uh, I think this is a situation where uh, Grass could end up struggling if Sir T Sir Turtle Lot. Sir Turtle Lot. <laughs> that's that all I him. heard right there. Well, that's hoping... that's the name. Sir Turtle Lot. Yeah. Sir, I I heard something different. <laughs> oh, that's what I said. But... I heard a D in there. Oh, I get. Well, when you say turtle really quick, it there's the sound. Turtle. Yeah, well, I don't enunciate as that that blatantly. I try not to actually. Yeah, but... just trolls casters all day. <laughs> uh, after lot. having after having uh, a turtle in last game, now we have another turtle here. So, and Bladeheart is going to be taking quite a bit of damage from somebody that he used to know, but they are going to be getting uh, out of there and it's going to continue farming for now. But somebody doesn't want to let this one go. We are one for one with the somebody uh, jokes, but we'll have to see. Blade Hard, does he have somebody to love him? Oh, he does. As somebody will get that kill. Yeah, that is a nice kill for the Taka. Meanwhile, Ninok is uh, just kind of wandering around trying to figure out where they want to go at the moment. Marto going to be going in deep to the enemy jungle, saying, you know what? Okay, you are making some moves in our jungle. I'll just go steal away yours. This is one of the strengths of the Lance as a roamer is you do have plenty of damage with which to go and steal jungle camps with. Yeah, and it's fairly early on, so it doesn't really matter that he doesn't have anything more than just that blade built up. But Grass, you know, he's just going to have to deal with somebody there as well. Grass is going to get pushed right up against his turret there from lane. Again, with the, the Lyra and the Celeste combo. That's two ranged lovely ladies that don't want you taking any farm. And they're very good at enforcing that. Yeah, especially, again, Lyra... If, if we were talking about it last game with the carry Lyra, it's, or last series with the carry Lyra, it doesn't matter if you're a carry Lyra or a roam Lyra. Uh, if you're up against that hero, you're going to be facing a lot of harass. It's just a fact of life. All right, so what is Gwen going to go? Actually has a little bit of life steal to go with it. And uh, really, that barbed needle, I have to see if that will be some life steal to finish off with the Serpent's Mask or not. A really nice combo between Marto and Grass. You saw her just with that uh, skedaddle and the boots, just trying to get that extra movement speed. They chunk out Sir Turtle a lot, but not quite the kill. Yeah, they're not going to get the kill, and that means the heals are going to come out from Lyra. So going to be okay, but now down in the okay. jungle, somebody, someone trying to run away and we'll get out to safety. We're just going to have too much fun with somebody. Uh, <laughs> your turtle lot, uh, thanks. I'm man. running out of songs. <laughs> I was just going for movie <laughs> references. Um, but yeah, somebody there uh, is not going to pick up that. Trent will be going over to Marto, but 3v1, Lance's days are numbered at this point. Yeah, well, he's got actually quite a bit of damage done in there, but and survived for quite some time. Unfortunately, uh, not going to be getting out alive. We did buy enough time for Bladeheart to go ahead and steal away the forward shop camps at least. So, you're not entirely a death in vain, but mostly. Just, just mostly a death in vain. Yep. Yeah, that that's better than about eighty percent of a death in vain. 80%. Well, all right. We'll have to see if we can get some better deaths down the line. Grass for now does actually go straight into the life steal. So Serpent's Mask secured five minutes in. We'll have to see where he goes with it from there. Bladeheart at this point does not look like he's going to be going into the purple master race. He's uh, actually got a good bit of armor and that Dragonheart. So Shiversteel first up. 
Yeah, very well could be for a blade heart. Either the shivers. I mean, obviously looking to go very tanky. Uh, actually, somebody even not going for the purple items either. Very interesting grass though. Well, that's gonna be not much happening there for the Gwen. I was really looking forward to the skedaddle, but didn't have the energy for it. So instead, Marto and Bladeheart, they got some impales and they got some damage. And Bladeheart has that level six. He's able to just kind of duck and dodge and still survive. Nidok is oh, going to be bringing him low, but it's not going to be that kill. Marto just trying to play interference there as well. <gasps> somebody. Will somebody find Bladeheart? Bladeheart will at least uh, show himself a little bit. There's the stun. Somebody cannot oh. get a kill. Beautiful play from Mardo. As soon as the Kaku was popped, using that Githian wall, slamming the Taka back into Ooh. the wall for the stun. Yeah, repeat. Yep. That is a another is kill. <laughs> let's go back to that gold nodi of uh, in the impale into the Githian wall. Yeah, Mardo's well, going to steal more farm. I like that. Hey, guy. why not? <laughs> I mean, if the, uh, if the opportunity is there, you got to go ahead and take it. Bladeheart is too low. I feel to try and make an aggressive move into the opponent's jungle, so let Marto do it. Grass, gotta be careful here. It's not a frost burn for a Celeste. He did go into the myth, so nothing really to slow up grass at this point. Marto and somebody just kind of going back and forth. You got that combat roll, and there's that shiver steal here from Bladeheart. But yes, it is a very tanky Bladeheart, isn't it? It's a good thing that grass can get kills by himself, even though it does come down to the wire. Yeah, it was very much down to the wire, but the healing just from the Serpent's Mask being just enough for Grass to stay alive in that duel. Meanwhile, down in the jungle, it is Bladeheart finding the kill onto somebody. And now Ninok, the lone member, out on the fold uh, past the base for the side of OMG Nexus. And it looks like Enix, you know, they were actually falling behind a bit in the early goings, but they have now brought the gold back up to par. And that's going to be you know, really good for their momentum. They are up a game at this point as well. So if they can get something of a relatively sure footing here in game number two, then if they can control the momentum, that's going to be feeling uh, real good, especially with a win under their belt already. So Marto going to go forward, looking for grass there as well. And again, they just really start chunking out Sir Turf a lot. Nobody really looking for damage to drop a grass. It is Marto soaking a lot of it here as well. Ninok has his work cut out for him, just trying to heal up all the poke here. Yeah, I'm very surprised that OMG Nexus haven't been trying to take more advantage of Grass's pick on this Gwen. Like, like I said, Gwen is very weak early on. Uh, has that Skedaddle, but Skedaddle, is, uh, I feel like, kind of needs a little bit of a buff to it. Uh, it does, removing all Rip. movement effects does help quite a bit, but it's then the, you know, preventing further movement effects is only half a second. That's an extremely short amount of time when you're Ooh. in a full-on fight. Tried to throw that ace out, but didn't connect. However, the Impale does. Yeah, and Sir Turtle Lot is going to be taking a lot of damage, but we did have a book right there from Ninok, and he's able to throw out some of those curveballs. Grass trying to just kind of sustain through it there with that lifesteal. Needs to get those last hits as well. 75 to the 84 as we got a Solar Storm to go through. It is still Gwen trailing a little bit, but has some kills to make up. But so does Sir Turtle Lot. So when it comes to this farm, i got to say that Sir Turtle Lot definitely a little bit uh, edging out. At the same time into the jungle, Bacon. Another fight, and Bladeheart just maybe needs a little bit more damage. Yeah, just a little bit more. As it's, he's come so close to finding kills. But because he opted for these tank items first, isn't quite able to close them out. Mardo, though, is going to be finding some damage. Gets the uh, interruptions there to just cause some havoc. Bladeheart will go down in the end, and actually they should be able to take Marto out as well. Run, run, He's run, got run. those boots, and heck, enough movement speed, and movements over the wall, and he actually gets out and still takes some extra jungle farm for his troubles. We're so low on energy here from Ninok. There's not much they can do up against Grass, who took the time bought by his teammates to bring down a turret to about a quarter or so. Marto is going to find Ninok here. Might have enough... Uh, uh, not enough spell power there for one ability but yeah she just goes straight out of energy from there somebody jumping on top of marto he's not having any of it get the in wall says no we don't really have any kind of vision in any of these bushes here from blue so omg nexus just gonna have to survive at this point yeah again gold is continuously slowly but surely growing towards the side of enix 
As Grass is going to have to duck down to the shop. I'm curious to see what the rest of this build will be. We don't really have, like, a standard set for Gwen builds because we haven't seen her much at all. So it is going to be the Serpent's Mask Breaking Point. This is the build I was expecting. I would be expecting out of Bladeheart, which Bladeheart could still very likely end up running. But double weapon power, and if they get double breaking point, they can do some serious damage. And Enoch is going to be getting a lot of damage taken, so Lordstorm doesn't really hit the mark. Yeah, and the portal, not really either. Grass just to follow through. He's going to take it back through this way, looking for Turtle, and he gets the ace on it as well. The ace for an ace. Marto will actually live through that one there as well. So Grass picks up two. I think the third actually did go over to Bladeheart, who did die very heroically. Uh, but he also does have that Serpent's Mask that you're talking about here, Bacon. So, yeah, the double weapon. It's sort of there. I wouldn't really say that Bladeheart's a bigger damaging character this round. But it's uh, working out as a big beefier comp here with Marto. Yeah, well, like I said, once if Bladeheart does go into the breaking point, then you're going to see both of them uh, just trying to stay alive for quite some time, get those stacks up, and try and really output their damage that way. And Bladeheart looks like that may be where he's going now, has the attack speed and a weapon blade in the inventory. So I'm, I'm fully expecting this to actually be a double Serpent's Mask, double breaking point. Well, we'll have to see if that works out. No Sora Blades to be found, but we do got one there on blue. It is uh, a banner, Sora Blade, and a little bit of armor there from somebody. Definitely a bit different than uh, currently the, the high-trending meta, so to speak. But the Bulwarks and the co Collapse not really doing its job. Enix even dodging out that Solar Storm. Now they're going full ham, and it's really Sir Turtle Lot just getting chunked down going to be Bladeheart picking up the kill. Grass is going to get hit by the Fountain and the Scout Trap, but will be at least healthy enough to follow through. Ninok is going to drop. She is uh, going to have to sit in that respawn timer for a little bit, and somebody with the Gynthian makes it another ace. Yeah, great job by Enix in these team fights. Their positioning and movement throughout the fights has been absolutely on point. Marto blocked out almost the entirety of that Solar Storm. And it was after Githian Wall had been used, so he had the 80% damage reduction. That's why it did almost nothing to him, despite eating the bulk of it. Sir Turtle Lot going to be coming out again, looking for this damage. They've got them low, but I don't know if they can actually finalize these kills. And Frostburn working out well for Sir Turtle Lot right there. And now Bladeheart actually could be in trouble. Nope, just kidding. Infinite escape. Kappa, kappa, kappa. Uh, 12 kills, though, going over to Enix. And there's the treads just to get them out of danger. Ninok is in hot pursuit at this point. Hit some of those potions, get some items, get some infusions, maybe turn around for a fight, but Grass, yeah, it's just a little bit too low right there. Ninok is going to be staying in range, looking for these curveballs, and Sir Turtle Lot, even with that ult, is still going to drop Bladeheart. Maybe that armor will come back to win in the end of it. There's one, there's two, and they clean it up. It's just Gwen to go down from Enix as Marto and Bladeheart turn it around for a 2v3 sweep. At that shop trip, Bladeheart picked up the broke the breaking point and ended up getting up to 19 stacks on it during that fight, paying <laughs> off immediately. And Gwen also grabbed the Sorrow Blade during uh, right before that fight started as well. So great job by Enix again. Their their ability to team fight is really impressive. Yeah, I was going to say, I've got to take back what I said about that armor a little bit earlier on. That being said, really it's only somebody that gets that armor damage in. But hey, Bladeheart and Marto, they made it happen, they made it work. And now this is a very similar situation to the last fight and OMG Nexus is not pursuing. Uh, definitely the wise decision there. Infusions coming out once again for members of Enix as they did also have them for that last fight. Grass, though... Very far forward, but not going to really be punished much for it. And that's going to be an ace, and Ninok is going to be feeling the burn on that one. But the snipe! Gwen didn't see that one coming. No real shield to go for grass right there, so makes the full front of it. Bladeheart trying to make this one happen. We've lost out Sir Turtle a lot, and now Bladeheart. Can he have those cooldowns? They've taken down the Lyra, and he's going to survive oh. again with the help of Marto. The, the bromance is real here. Uh, and... Bladeheart even had a reflex block that was off cooldown that he could have used. Like, this is absolutely ridiculous close. what Bladeheart is making happen on this Blackfeather now. 9, 3, and 6. I'm telling you, once you get that two-item power spike with Blackfeather, he becomes a monster 
to try and deal with. And, you know, they have to choose one of these two targets. Both of them with very similar builds means that they're both going to be, you know, kind of accomplishing very similar things. And OMG Nexus, they've been trying to focus down grass. They've been able to focus down grass, but then Bladeheart just runs rampant. Now they catch Bladeheart on the retreat. Was not able to get out along with Marto. They're going to continue chasing onto Marto, and why not? You've got a three on two for the next 20 seconds, but it is, uh, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to find these f this fight that they're looking for. Yeah, we've seen three V2s, and they, they don't work out for OMG, and there goes the ace into the stun. The Solar Storm not actually really going to be hitting the mark right there, but Grass is trying. Doesn't quite still have that survivability, but he has the burst instead. Is Grass not going to go down? There we go. Ninok will secure the kill. Now Marto is here in pursuit. Needs to go through that uh, portal. Decides not to. Doesn't hit the portal on the way back out. And Marto with the combat row. Ninok, are you out of options? Yeah. She missed! Minok will survive. Not going to be an ace either way. Oh, Marto. So close to finishing off that ace. But remember at the start of the game, I said that uh, Gwen has a really strong late game? Yep. There it was. Yep. <laughs> Gwen has, uh, I'll say it again, You know, Gwen, while she is very weak early on, her late game is very impressive. So, while I still am not a huge fan of the pick because of that early game, they got past it. Enix weathered the storm, and Gwen is now at a point where uh, she is a very formidable foe. I'm not too sure they weathered the storm. I think I think they were the storm. Uh, they're up 6,000 gold at this point here, Bacon. So there wasn't really a time where Grass was significantly behind. He's actually yeah. held a majority advantage. So Gwen with an advantage. Scary stuff late game, man. Yeah, and like I said, I, I mentioned it earlier. I really felt like... Uh, the side of OMG were not taking advantage of the Gwen pick, and now they're paying for it. Yeah, and Sir Turtle Lot is uh, kind of going to be the target, but perhaps biting off a bit too much to chew here. Bladeheart's going to come in, and now it is going to be that familiar 2v3. Grass is dead in the water. Marto with the double root into the back. Bladeheart and somebody. This is somebody's time to shine. He gets that kill, or at least he helps make it happen. Marto. Could this be the throw from Enix? This is going to be the first show of force we've seen from OMG Nexus, and there is a Kraken waiting right there. Humanist would be proud. That was an incredible throw from the side of Enix. I mean, you have this huge lead. That still doesn't mean you go fight 2v3. Like, when your team has 40,000 gold, and you're up by 6,000... More than 6,000 gold belongs to one of your players. And so if you go fighting 2v3, you are now taking that gold that you have and just throwing it out the window. That's exactly what Enix just did there. I mean, Bladeheart was nowhere close to that fight until after Grass was already long dead. It's a huge mistake coming out of Enix. And, you know, well, now... <laughs> yeah, Bladeheart is thinking of, you know, trying to bait out that backdoor attempt with the crystal exposed, but... Not going to be finding, and uh, again, another another antidote from Humanist is the, once a team has that exposed crystal, they just start playing a lot sloppier. Uh, they, they might yeah, very well. Right now, they are sort of in control here. OMG Nexus, are that they? snipe! <laughs> oh, that snipe did so much work right there. Oh, big Solar Storm doesn't find a kill, but it does clear them away from this turret. And Kraken is getting down pretty low, but should be able to push in onto this third turret with the help of the rest of OMG. Are get they going to find a fight? Yeah, don't get cocky. You got the stuns. The health is low here on top of Marto. He has no fountain here either. And the artillery is actually starting to do some good work here. Enix might be uh, a little bit more on the back foot, a little bit sloppy as he put it here, Bacon. But OMG Nexus finding those footing. They're bringing this gold lead down just a little bit. It's only 4K between them now. Yeah, it is a much closer gold disparity and much closer objective difference as well as all three of the lane turrets have just been taken out by the side of OMG Nexus. I mean, this is still Enix's game to lose. They do still have the exposed <laughs> crystal, but... Bladeheart. Oh, boy. Bladeheart. There's so many traps out. Like, it's hard to get this back door going. And somebody in Bladeheart, I mean, they're going to tango here. Marto, he's just looking to be that distraction. Now it's a full-on fight as Bladeheart comes down low. The Solar Snipe, I'm not entirely too sure if it hit really anybody past Blade, but Blade is refusing to die. Sir Turtle Lot will drop, and now he's making a beeline. This is it. They've lost out two. Ninok is the last survivor. And that's not going to be for too much longer. The triple.
for Gwen, who just got called useless in team in Twitch chat. It's going to be Bladeheart now finishing <laughs> it out, and it'll be 2-0 for the team of Enix. Yeah, that was definitely not the cleanest of finishes. Enix uh, looked like they were trying their best to give the game over to OMG Nexus, but eventually they do finally find a fight to close this one out and take the victory and the series 2-0. Here's the state of your game. Marto has a Soro Blade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't see that on, on the Rome's notch, but triple weapon. Let's just call it that by the end of the day. And even with all the armor right there, I mean, Sir Turtlelod had himself not only a metal jacket, but a coat of At the same time, Nidok with the heels, you know, doing some work. The bulwark's a little bit slow, but doing their work regardless. We had an Atlas, double Atlas here mm -hmm. on the side of them as well. Wasn't enough. It might be actually able to stop some of the attack speed, but the stacks were strong. Usually, Bacon is. This is where you tell me that you were right, and Gwen has a really strong late game. But uh, okay. I already said it. I already yeah, took care of that. Yeah, it just reinforced the points. Either <laughs> way, bring Dragonborn in. It was a good set of matches, but we're not done yet, are we, bro? No, we are not. We got a few more matches for you guys. It's still pretty young in the night here as uh, we got another good hour and a half of streaming to do. Uh, so we are making our way to round number three uh, momentarily as we look to get into the next matchup here. We're going to take a quick break and then from there we're going to hopefully be able to take a look at some of these matchups in the loser bracket. Hopefully. Uh, cross your fingers for that as uh, a lot of those matches either wrap up or some of these teams are just unfortunately uh not able to show up so without further ado we are going to take a quick break when we return we'll get you guys into round number three of the split two of the autumn season Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy.
All right, we are back, and uh, need to take a quick break, but we are all recharged and ready to go. And it looks like we will be moving on to round three, but we will be actually looking at uh, Enix going into uh, Impact Exodus. So this is going to be the first start of uh, the round three, of uh, one of the first matches actually to take place in round three. So this will be game one. And the Enix, we just saw, um, but you know what? Impact Exodus, they've been working their way up through the bracket here. Uh, definitely impressing. So this is probably going to be a pretty exciting matchup, guys. Oh, well, one would hope so. Into round three, you're both undefeated at this point. And Marto, Bruticus, and Bladeheart, they've... Uh... <laughs> They've actually subbed out grass for Bruticus this round, so who knows which way the draft will actually end up this round. <laughs> well, it'd be interesting to see just as how it went uh, in the previous one. I'm still waiting for an invite, actually. I don't know if they sent it. If I missed it. Did Paralyzed miss it? wants to be your friend. No, uh, you don't have one yet. Okay. But it uh, looks like we're up against Polyphemus, uh, Kupu to Malam, which is definitely a name that I recognize, and I love Harambe, perhaps. Harambe. I love Harambe. Who doesn't love Harambe? Who doesn't? <laughs> don't love Harambe, Bacon. I'm, I'm trying to look at the uh, previous split because the name Impact Exodus is super familiar. Yeah, so and I was trying to see why. They actually they made it yeah, just games. before the top eight last split. Yeah, they did really well. And they actually, there were two Impact teams, I believe. So... Uh, the Impact Org, uh, definitely trying to make an impact here in the Challenger series, but uh, doing really great, and we're, I'm oh, really wow. excited to see. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited to see how Exodus does. If they do as well as they did um, last split, it'd be really impressive, especially going into Enix. Enix is a team that you know again also made it to the Challenge Battle, so they were a top three team last season. I mean, last split, and uh, if they can do it again, uh, that means that. Impact Exodus has their work cut out for them, uh, but uh, Impact looking to probably play spoiler tonight. Well, I'm also looking at the brackets here, and we were invited to a game from Art of the Throw, but they lost to Necrolite 2 0, and we don't want to cast loser games. So, Wow. Harsh. <laughs> Harsher is. Loser's game. I said loser games. Harsher is sorry. that I was not friends with Marto, and he just had to add me. Oof. Nobody's friends with you, Dragon. You're it's like, like, Humanist wasn't wow. my friend before this? That's brutal. Like, all night you're just complaining that nobody's friends with Nobody. you. Nobody. Like, I mean, it's on, like bro? everyone, like, did a house cleaning of all of their friends, and I was on the cutting block. <laughs> I got chopped from a lot. I mean, I could have sworn I was. I um, mean, you know, I'd be doing these streams We need VIS for a while. Mod 1. We need VS Mod NA. We need VIS. Oh, Dragonborn? No, we don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. So, all right. Uh, let's see. It's, is that the roster that they're playing tonight? Oh, it's a little bit different. But uh, we are ready to uh, jump into this into this matchup here. Just a few seconds. I love Harmbra. He is playing. You know who's not playing that's on this roster is Guard. And that's surprising. So we're going to take a quick look at the roster as we jump into this uh, momentarily. Enix and Impact Exodus. Marto, Bruticus, Bladeheart, and then I love Harambe. Uh, we've, uh, I, uh, I have guard there. Again, that guy just got updated as he is not playing tonight. Uh, Polythemus is the one. So otherwise, it looks like, without further ado, guys, we are ready to start this game and get into the draft. So Tasty Bacon, by all means, take us away. All right. Well, we are going to be getting on into the draft game at number one here in round number three both of these teams having picked up two victories and looking for a third will be that kestrel band away no surprise there yeah kestrel and maybe a samuel we've not seen any samuel bands tonight we haven't actually seen any picks either but uh, you know i guess there's a first time for everything yeah absolutely uh, samuel I still feel like Samuel's super, super strong. I'm actually very surprised at the sudden like drop off of Samuel in terms of his pick ban rate. But you know, it seems like every so often when he does come out, he still makes a very big impact. So it's uh, not going to be happening here in this game. The Ozo hover, uh, triple Ozo hover. That's how you know it's a troll. Troll la 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 la. I dare you to do it. Do it now. <laughs> Rhyme, I don't think is any better at this point. Although yeah. Rhyme, I see actually you know support here and there for Rhyme coming through, but as a first pick, I think it's a bit too dicey. 
Yeah, and like I said, when, when the entire team hovers it, that's how you know they're not actually doing it. Uh, Humanist and I had actually a discussion on this over in Europe this, earlier today of if if the entire team does it or if they actually like if they hold the hover for the majority of their pick timer, those are the two ways you know that they're not actually going to do it. Okay, so no Ozo, no Rhyme. Instead, we got a Lance, we got an Arden, a Celeste, and a Scarf. This just leaves us really with our jungles at this point. And Blade Art made it work out really well the first round, so. Yeah, here's round number two of the Black Feather. Yeah, Black Feather has been really rising up the ranks in terms of pick priority. So not terribly surprising. After the kind of game you just had on it, why not make it happen again? Remember, Kroll will be the answer. I'm not sure about this, <laughs> to put it lightly. Well, I mean, Kroll up against Marto and Bladeheart. Sounds okay. If he can get enough stacks and catch in quick enough, Bruticus will go down. But yeah, it's it's looking... Uh, I, I gotta say, I think I like Enix a little bit better. This is the comp that sort of just, you know, two-thirds dominated last round. Yeah, I mean, but crawl into a Lance generally doesn't work. No. Uh, crawl into Scarf is kind of hit or miss if you can get a dead man's because you're going to get slowed up so massively by those goops if you can get a dead man's rush off while you're on the goop you can work out but uh other than that i mean it's it's going to be tough going i think for this curl well we'll have to see how they do both teams into uh you know sort of the winners as they have not lost yet uh team enix and impact exodus We'll have to see how the IEXD work out. Exodial didn't work out so well, so we'll have to see if the other EXO team can uh, put up some points. Yeah, well, right now, they're going to be getting themselves out onto the fold, and we can see Mardo and Bladeheart with a slightly more efficient clear time to start things off, so they should be hitting that jungle shop first. And, I mean, that's to be expected with a Lance, but it's a three-man rotation for Impact. Yeah, so that's that's going to be the key to not fight right there. Koopa's going to look at the front, but, of course, nothing's going to be there. So, Rudigus will just continue on like nothing is really the matter. And we're not going to see any kind of aggression here early on. We do have another contract out there, the Iron Guy for Koopa. So, that's going to be a little bit of energy regen there for Harambe, as long as he can get those last hits on the big guys. Yeah, I love Harambe. Uh, go with the memes for the names. And... The name is. <laughs> God, please no. Just <laughs> uh... <laughs> like the name no. about the memes. Bruticus is going to be going down. Nearly got the kill traded out because of the turret, but Polyphemus will be able to recall. And that's one of the ways you make a Krull pick work. You clear out your jungle immediately go up to lane and get that gank level one level two crawl ganks are super effective polyphemus is uh, con uh pff, signature that's the word signature heroes apparently this crawl and i gotta say you know with that rush down on top of bruticus they made it work out well hopefully we'll see some uh, plays like that again and again but for now Polly gonna tank up a little bit has some armor has some shield and some attack speed so we'll have to see which way he wants to lean yeah, and Bladeheart is going to be here. Does not hit with the uh, the on point. It was not on point, as they are going to just have to back off. Yeah, and they're just going to bounce for now. So not really too much. You know, even after that kill, not really a lot was gained out of it. Because as we know, it's not about the kills. It's what you do after the kills. And so far, both teams more or less just content to stick to themselves. You got Bladeheart just taking out those backs. Polyphemus is going to be a little bit late to it. And we got a trap, so he is uh, rather alerted there. Marto, though, into the back. With that Githian wall, it's going to be that. I don't know who got that one, Bacon, but Marto and Bladeheart now going to fight this one out and crawl. If he can cash in on those stacks, it's going to be bad news. But we do got the stun. We had those boots there as well. And Bruticus trying to come in and do a little bit of artillery support. Harambe, though, is here as well. Take some big chunks out of Bruticus. Yeah, unfortunately, Polyphemus was not able to cash in those stacks because he had just done so to secure that Treant. The Treant did go over to Polyphemus. Uh, now that the abilities are off cooldown, he's willing to go back in and is going to find a kill. Yeah, Marto just doesn't really have anything else after that one. Doesn't even have boots taken. Uh, still doesn't actually have boots. There we go. Picks up him up with the last 300. So we are going to get aggressive and finally take out those backs. Two kills to the impact, though. Gotta say, the Krull's looking all right. 
Yeah, the crawl will look all right early. It, it's later once the cooldowns get low and once the scarf has the ability to just like completely slow people down. It's that's when the crawl is going to start having some problems. Uh, it is just going to be the very tanky crawl build that a lot of players do like, unfortunately. Uh, but Blade Heart is going to be get found here. He does get the tree in, so at least uh, a little bit of worth here on this death if it comes through. There it is. Yeah, it was a nice attempt there from Marto. Had the root, had the gift in, didn't have anything to stop Harambe coming through. And Harambe doesn't have a lot of energy, but enough for the core class. That's going to be enough just to close the gap. And, you know, you lunge forward there with Polly. You can lunge forward there with the Arden. You got the Vanguard there for the speed up. There's a lot of chase for these guys. Yeah, a lot of chase potential, but Polly is going to end up not getting that tree in as it goes over to Marto. And now uh, it's going to, should be able to get out of here, but. Impact Exodus, they're doing a great job of applying a lot of pressure. Even when they aren't necessarily able to get what they're looking for, the pressure is still definitely uh, something that Enix could have some trouble dealing with. Yeah, Marto has been a bit of a punching bag. He's taking a lot of the hits. Uh, but at the same time, it's the rotations. That's right? his job. <laughs> well, yes, I'm giving him praise. Uh, but IEXD... Just sort of roaming together a lot, uh, very, very close knit. You know, if it's not all three of them, it's Kupu and Polly. Not a lot of babysitting for Harambe yet. Yeah, they they've actually the fact that they haven't really been spending too much time in the lane is kind of a sentiment to I love Harambe's ability here. Forty three CS keeping up with the Bruticus perfectly well, and not, without even really having that babysit. So looking down to jungle, it's twenty nine to twenty nine. So Polyphemus, this is the crawl is a hero that typically we end up seeing falling behind in terms of the CS numbers. So, again, doing a good job there. Now, going to try and jump onto Bruticus, gets that slow, but gets slowed up himself. However, the Spectral Smite followed up with a Core Collapse stun will be enough for a fifth kill of the game. Marto with the root and kind of saw them coming, but only got the root on top of one. Where is Bladeheart? He's off to the left, and he's not actually looking for any kind of uh, steals at this point, but we are going to be very close to level 6. There it is. Polly picks it up. If you can actually cash in on the stacks, Blade Heart is going to have a heck of a time living, and we do get those stacks there. Polly back to full. Kupu is going to be okay, but there's the Hell's Heart, and Blade Heart does get his own 6 as well. So he's going to be there with the infinite escape, and now it's a 3v3, and Harambe is not looking so hot. Yeah, Harambe getting dropped very low is going to be okay, though, because they've got far enough away. And, well, no kills come out of that re-engage. Although, you can definitely tell Polyfemus really wanted that kill on the Blade Heart with the From Hell's Heart. But, uh, not going to find it there. However, Mardo just trying to provide a little bit of interference and keep Polyfemus from being able to do what he wants. Polyfemus coming up to the lane, but they obviously, again, Mardo saw that. However, Bruticus did not react fast oh. enough. And the Solar Storm prediction... Great shot from I Love Harambe. Polly and Harambe are actually comboing really nicely. Mm -hmm. Kupu is here mostly just for the, the vanguards. We're going to get those gauntlets out as quick as we can, but it's still a little bit off. Polly and Harambe are just so much on the same same wavelength, though, that all six kills are basically because of Polly at this point. Yeah, 3-0-3. Three, oh, three. He has been involved in every single one of those kills. Uh, it's actually kind of funny that then I love Harambe is 2-0-2 oh, and, and Kupu is 1-0-3. Oh, oh, and three. Oh, so, he messed it up. Yeah. Should have been 1-0-1-1. Oh, one, one. <laughs> That's what I was... I thought it was at first because I didn't have the phone close enough Pattern. to my face to be able to read. Ooh, <laughs> Bruticus gets brutalized pretty hard on that one. Great gauntlet into the catch. Marto's going to come down low, but it's not really worth their time at this point. And Polly, no, well, maybe he's going to be worth their time. If he wants to face check like that... No problem, but the Githian wall, Polly, he is going to have this speed up, and he should be able to cash in. No, kind of decides to give himself up instead. Yeah, very interesting, especially because, I mean, if they just waited a second or two, like, they could have then re-engaged. I love Harambe was going to have that ultimate up, and I'm actually kind of surprised it still hasn't been thrown out here, but Marto is going to be uh, able to get out alive after picking up the kill onto Polyphemus. Polyphemus gets that shiver steal, it's all about the ability to stick on a target for this particular crawl build. All right, so we're going to try to stick to Bladeheart. Nope, never mind. He uses the boots, so that's going to be the end of that chase. So 
Questionable decision aside, Polly, definitely a little bit more tanky at this point, has that attack speed, the Shiver Steel, and still rocking some of that armor. Bruticus and Harambe trading out in lane. It is Bruticus to push a little bit. It's Harambe to take a little bit of a lead, though, when it comes to those last hits. And Marto, he's been trying his best, man, but again, like I feel like Marto is sort of trying to fight a war on two fronts, and he's kind of coming up short on both. Uh, yeah, it definitely feels like that. He's, it seems like he's torn between does he sit and babysit the lane or does he go try and help the jungle? And the rotations from Impact Exodus have been on point. feels like every time he Ooh. ducks down to the jungle is when Polyphemus is up in the lane looking for to combo with I Love Harambe for a kill. Uh, right now, all six members are up in the area. They need to be careful. Blade Heart just decides, okay, maybe I can just get this A off, maybe. Now it's going to get the, we have that Atlas, so the maim is actually good, but Blade Heart is so low, we have a gauntlet. He has the infinite escape, though. He is going to be all right. And Bruticus, well, maybe not so much. He's going to be dead in the water. And that's going to be a nice double root. Kupu has the Vanguard ready to go. Although the shield is about to wear off. There's the stun for the Githian as Marto tries to chase out a bit, but between he and Blade Heart, I'm not entirely too sure they can get too much done here. Oh, when the root connects, Bladeheart jumps in. They are going to come so close to finding a kill, but it's Bladeheart that goes down in the end. And well, the call was there from Mardo to go in, and unfortunately, it just wasn't the right one to make. Marta's not careful. Polly actually might eat him for breakfast at this point, but he's going to give up that positioning of the bush. Nope, finds Marto instead. Marto's already used the Githian. Next best bet is going to have that combat roll, and over the wall he goes. The gold mine, though, did get activated. Not entirely too sure if Impact want to finish it out. We have a 10 minute infusion. Polly is starting to get a little bit more damage here, Bacon. Yeah, is still looking for the breaking point as the lone damaging item in the build. Uh, I've been very vocal in the past about uh, not year. liking <laughs> this build, but I mean, it, it does get the job done. I just feel like going for Sorrow Blade is just simply more effective. Blade Heart going to have to use the Rose Offensive to get over the wall to avoid having to walk into the entirety of Impact Exodus. But, uh, I mean, they have a pretty solid lead in terms of momentum it's not really showing up on the scoreboard other than in the kills but the gold is still almost even it's only about four to five hundred gold in their favor so they really haven't been able to find the objectives or out farm their opponents despite all these kills they've been able to pick up oh it is 105 to 95 when you look at the laners harambe and bruticus just uh, starting to tip a little bit there towards impact uh, exodus and that's because six of the nine kills are actually on Bruticus. So yeah, it might look good at nine to one, but a lot of the kills are centered on top of the lane, not the jungle. So that's why they haven't really been able to make too much more happen out of that. It looked great. Bruticus went down numerous times. We got that lead there for Harambe, but overall they haven't done a big job of keeping him down. He's not two items yet, but Bruticus has the cash very soon uh, to change that. Mac, might actually have it now. And Polyphemus with this crawl build, you know, your jungle clear as Every minute that passes, your jungle clear gets a little bit slower, and you just slowly start to fall behind Bladeheart in terms of gold. However, I mean, one of the things I love talking about is the mental game in Vainglory, and when you look up at the scoreboard, even though they're very, very close on gold, if you just see, you know, 0-6 is Bruticus, like, you feel like you're behind, regardless of what the CS numbers are. Marto over the wall. That might have been a bit of a mistake, but we do got some goops and some spitfires. Unfortunately, the poke is actually being won out here by Harambe. You have five stacks. Where's the ult? I mean, it could come through, but he's just really—he just really wants to make sure that he can get the kill. So as soon as somebody goes in, as soon as we get that gauntlet, it could totally happen here, Bacon. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like it should have been thrown out already. You have five stacks on Four, the broken three. myth. Oh, that was such a big opportunity for I Love Ramba. I think just went by the wayside. Into the void they go. Instead, it's going to be a gold mine. This is going to be the first one. I think this might be the first yep. one of the day. Yeah, it is the first one of the game. It had been started up earlier, but uh, no commitment to it. So gold mine does go over 300 gold per player on the side of Impact Exodus, and well, now they do have a little bit of a gold lead to show for their efforts. And it's a pretty good time to cash in on it as well, because once we do get that crack in, it's going to be, what, maybe a 
medium oh, at best. Oh, Bruticus, Bruticus has nowhere to go. Yeah, he's all locked up. And that being said, that was three ultimates just to kill Scarf. And I, Bladeheart gets up here quickly. Like they can still defend this turret, and that is a lot spent for a single kill that they're not going to get much out of. Yeah, and that's sort of been the name of the game so far here, Bacon, right? And they haven't really been able to secure too much of a gold lead, simply because they just get these one kill, they go back, Marto and Bladeheart are able to just somehow hold and survive, and Bladeheart will at least survive again for now, 30 seconds until the snipe is up from Harambe, so again... Marto and Bladeheart, their synergy working well. Harambe and Polly, they're uh, definitely on the same wave lakes here as well. And we pick up a lot of defense in that last buy. Yeah, lots of defensive items. You see Aegis for I love Harambe. There's a Atlas Pauldron now for a Kupu. And an Aegis for a Polyphemus as well. Still no damage item completed yet. But they haven't really needed it because they've really just been looking for a single kill at a time. Which, uh, well, right now, they're going to be taking a good chunk of damage. Marto on the front lines, blocking up quite a bit of it. Or they have to be wary of that From Hell's Heart Ooh. coming out. Nice done. Polly looking for an engage. He is going to start stacking those top of the turret. Isn't able to cash in, but he's not really that hurt. Here comes Bladeheart, though, from the back, or at least from the side. Kupu could be in trouble. Has no, no gauntlet. 13 seconds. Does not have that movement or that stop up, but Polly is now going to turn it around. There's the Hell's Heart on top of Bruticus. The Crucible came out a bit late, and with that Solar Storm through, that's going to be the kill going over to Polly, and perhaps the second here as well. Bladeheart has got to really time out these cooldowns. Marto's there as well, just trying to be uh, that interference call. But they do get the kill, and they do get aced for their trouble. I think Bladeheart is really misplaying these team fights pretty yeah. heavily. Uh, your job as a Black Feather, especially a very tanky Black Feather, this build path he's going, is get onto the back lines, take out the carry. That should be what everyone is trying to do, especially into a Krull composition. A Krull that has not built any offensive tier 3 items. Like, your, your only goal in this game, if you are a member of Enix right now, should be killing I Love Harambe. Five zero and six for I love Harambe at sixteen minutes. Uh, that is really just a situation that should not happen. Oh, Bruticus didn't see that one coming. Well, he's gonna have some time to reflect as he has thirty seconds before he enters the fold once more. That was only one ult though. We still got a Harambe and that Solar Snipe. We got the Gauntlet. Is well, no, we don't. The Gauntlet's down for another thirty seconds. <laughs> but uh, Marto and Bladeheart to get a steal onto this is gonna be incredibly hard. Yeah, it is going to be very difficult. It's always difficult to steal an objective away from a Krull. Uh, saving that Spectral Smite for once Kraken gets down low enough. As you can see, Marto trying to cause some havoc in here. Kupu is getting dropped very low, but once the, Krull, or once the uh, Kraken goes down, they are going to then try and turn this fight back around. Marto in a lot of trouble. Solar Sniper Storm? Room? Solar Storm? Yeah, we're both Solar looking Storm? for it. Why is Five. it there a solar star being thrown? <laughs> Five stacks, no solar oh, star. Oh my goodness. Bad, man. I we also am... got that Kraken, so maybe he wants to hold it for something a bit more guaranteed. We got a gauntlet up now. It's on we have a infusions. really short cooldown at this point. Just throw it. <laughs> and he doesn't know that, okay? <laughs> How would you... <laughs> doesn't oh. have any cooldown reduction at all, Bacon. It doesn't matter. There's three points in it. It's not that long of a he cooldown. It's a guaranteed kill. Okay? It's all he like... wants. Put up the gauntlet, throw it out. That's it. That's the combo. Don't mess up the combo. Uh, Marto actually doing a really good job of keeping these guys at bay. This uh, Kraken comes down. Oh, okay, there we go. The gauntlet did go down, and Bruticus maybe soon to follow. The turret has dropped. Polly is still into the back looking for that kill on top of the scarf. We've lost out Kupu. Now Bladeheart and Harambe could actually go the way of Harambe. He does have enough energy to do it, but it's not going to be a kill for Kroll in the back line. The Kraken only gets one turret, Bacon, and it's not the push they were looking for. Um, well, most likely because they allowed a member to live right before the push started when they had a very clear and obvious opportunity to get the kill. I'm sorry, bro, but <laughs> that's not happening. That's not happening. Harambe is not going anywhere. He is now going to complete this ace if he goes down in four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. Oh, he's going to live through it. Oh, he might even take down Bruticus with him. Didn't get the ace, though. Yeah, no ace coming out as Kupu did respawn just in time. But, oof, 
some big mistakes in this game, I feel, on both sides. And, I mean, these are the types of things, though, like, it may seem like I'm being overly critical, especially when a team no. is winning. He's just being big. And... But, <laughs> I, one, it's it's just how, how, how I am. But, two, these teams are vying for a spot in the challenge battles where they want to make it into the Evil 8. If you have... If you want to have any hope of beating an Evil 8 team, these kinds of things that are getting pointed out cannot happen. You're right, man. You're right. You got to be playing at the highest of levels. And those Solar Snipes, we're both in agreement on that one. We're just kind of curious that they have not been coming out, especially at full stacks. Yeah, it's uh, almost like well. I feel like if we don't mention these things, like we're doing these players a disservice for if they go and rewatch the VODs. Like they they need to hear these types of things so that they can improve. It's It's... Uh, really messages for their future selves. Exactly. That way we look really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they when they play later in the tournament and oh, they no! oh rip did not have uh didn't no he did use the treads. Wow. Good attempt yeah. though, and they get out like it's not that big a deal. But now Kraken is up, and you don't have that goal for eighty seconds. Don't have treads for forty five as well. I mean, like when you hit the treads, you expect the whole team to go for it. It was just Kupu doing that one. Uh, a little bit of miscommunication right there. Polly finds Marto. He's not going to find anything else out of it. Marto with a shiver steal as well. Just trying to curb down some of the momentum of these teams. And Bruticus, he's still sitting pretty at 1-9 and nine Bacon. But if he can survive through this next fight, it could be the turnaround. Yeah, it very well could be. Polyphemus going to get hit up for a lot of damage. But so is Marto. As I love Harambe putting out so much with those Helios being dropped from the back line. Artillery Cannon online, Hell's Heart online, finds Blade Heart, does not have a Rose Offensive in time. Kind of dies on the way to the, the point B right there, but the Solar Storm does go through. Was at the five stacks, Bacon, so we're good on that front, but we're getting kited pretty hard here. Marto with the Roots, we're going to have that Githian Wall up here in a moment, and there's actually enough energy here from Bruticus, I think, if they kept chasing to get kills. So they are going to just turn right around, and you got a Kraken to go. Yep, Kraken available. There's no need to go chasing those kills. Just start up the Kraken, get yourself this objective, and look for a better push than you had last time. I mean, the last push wasn't horrendous, but definitely could have been much better. Now, there is Bruticus getting lots of damage down. Kraken very low. This could be stolen very easily by a Spitfire, oh, and yes! he gets it! Oh, the gauntlet there to celebrate the fact, and they kill out the dragon for his troubles. Marto just trying to prevent Ace. Well, good job you did, dude. Uh, <laughs> now you throw a solar ults. storm. Two now you ults. throw the solar storm. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, but that's that's oh, a kraken oh, for them, though. That's that's a kraken going over to Enix. So they have uh, they have a little bit of breathing room here. Oh man, that is rough. I mean, getting the kraken stolen at least. For Impact Exodus, you can say, hey, we're getting an extra 500 gold off of this, but they are going to lose out on their first turret. Now they're looking for a potential ace onto Bladeheart. Nope, they're not going to be able to find that chase. No, they're not. The Kraken is actually still moving forward, but, I mean, its days are numbered. So instead, Bladeheart is going to navigate through this minefield of scout traps out there, and uh, he's going to be A-OK. -okay. He's going to head home. Tier 3 boots for him. We got some armor for Celeste. We're starting, starting coming into the point where we're hitting that uh, 4 to 5, perhaps maybe 6 items here soon enough, uh, Bacon. So 22 minutes in. The gold leads still 4K up for Impact Exodus. Yeah, we are getting closer and closer to that point where uh, gold actually doesn't matter. Polyphemus did get the Sorrow Blade. Okay. Uh, while I am a fan of having Sorrow Blade before breaking say, we point, can't please you, man. <laughs> like, like it's it's so late. <laughs> it's so late to come out. Twenty-two minutes Sorrow Blade. <laughs> but either way, we could have a potential fight here. Yep, Root there, Polyphemus, okay, that's going to be the gauntlet. Actually does get the stun on top of Marto, but Bladeheart is still uh, just ducking around. We do got that Solar Storm to go through again. Doesn't really seem to be the end-all damage, but Bladeheart really needs to invest in a little bit more shield right now because he's getting torn apart, and he's going to try to get the damage done, Bacon. Doesn't actually happen. Marto and Bruticus now in a 2v3, and Bruticus very likely to become 1 and 11 here momentarily. Can he bring down Polly? There's a shield and the spectrals. This could be game, my friend. It very well could be. Uh, I love Farambe. Had an opportunity to go out to the right and take down uh, 
Marto, but they instead you know, wanted to guarantee the kill on Bruticus. Now they're going to get into the base. They're not going to worry about having minions. Their damage to the turrets is massive. Marto uh, is just a roamer. There's not really a whole lot of damage that he's going to be able to do. Enough. The turret, though, yeah, the turret's doing quite a bit. I love Harambe low on energy, but the turret is going to go down. Can Marto actually stop this? Mom, Here blade heart. Blade heart. They have enough damage to get these kills as they are going to find one there's two and three the game okay. will continue all right that that ace brings us from a crystal about 15 percent or so into a brand new world but with kraken not exactly up yet oh there it is kraken time is actually on point enix could secure a second kraken give them a little bit more of a lease on life but they also got to be very aware of a backdoor attempt they should start putting down some scout traps but one fact that is in Enix's favor yep. is teams play have a tendency. I'm not gonna play. be not gonna be all encompassing on this play. one. But teams have a tendency to play significantly worse when they are up against an exposed crystal. That is true. Now, fortunately, we saw a little bit of sloppiness last game, but it was still the team that exposed the crystal first to win. But with the turret down, the Kraken to push forward, and some, well, uh, infusions to be added into the mix. It's going to actually be a really close fight for these guys. There's only less... Yeah, there's about 3,000 gold here, Bacon. There's not that much between the teams. Yeah. All right. Well, they're going in. Yeah, Gauntlet not happening. Get the wall. Marto already a good start to this one. Bruticus is not taking the damage that he normally does. There it is. It's finally starting to pile up. The Solar Storm did some work. Cleaved right through. I love Harambe. That was real low. They trade out the two crystals. Polly is going to make a break for it. He is going to be running. Marto says, nah, -uh, but that's going to be uh, the route. He did actually try to uh, use the Githian already, got blocked out. Blackfeather did get the kill before this as well. Blackfeather went all the way home, and Polly is Why? going to get his dreams all shut down here. Why did Blackfeather go back? He could have pushed with the Kraken and won the game. Yeah, I don't know. He wanted to make sure that uh, the Crystal didn't get dove. He didn't have They're, faith in Marto. Like, <laughs> what's this ace going to do for you? <laughs> like, <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah, you got the ace. That's nice. You get the regen. I this mean, game? they should still win. This game? They should Wait, still be able to win. Mills Bacon is about to lose to 11. Bruticus uh, is 1 and 12. A true work of art. However, I love Harambe. Could potentially make the steal. Get those here stacks comes up. Here uh, comes Kupu. Kupu is here. But Kraken, yeah, Kraken's still too healthy. I don't know. Blader is about to drop. Marto is here. The Kraken is actually yeah. looking real strong. They're, they're focusing their damage on Marto. Yeah, they, I think Kraken does more damage. At this point, you're right. This is this is good, man. Enix will take game one here. There's no way to stop it now. Yeah, one more swing will do it. There it is. And the beautiful work of art that was this throw is complete. So the Blackfeather getting the kill on the Arden was pretty key at the end there, but you're right. Like He totally could have pushed, but as soon as he got the kill, it looks like he, he backed immediately. And that's when Polly is just like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> and he curved down, and Bladeheart just uh, joined the fray eventually at the end there. So, wow. GG. This is why kills, this is why kills don't matter. Uh, I have... <laughs> <laughs> it's just People so upsetting. Like, I'm, it's one of those situations where it's like I'm not even mad. I'm disappointed. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you had such a huge lead. You had multiple opportunities to close out this game. Just needed more solar. Storm, and man. they just went full wind up, and they just they threw a strike right down the middle. Well, we they will feel lost that game. And well, I mean, for Impact Exodus, the they could say that they should have won this game. As long as they don't get tilted off of the throw, then they can still very much so come back and win game number two and push this to game number three. Well, they bowled a strike. They carried over. They got the win. Dragon, heck of a game right there, my friend. Yeah, we will all feel bad for Impact Exodus. That was uh, like their game to lose, and they found a way to do it. Uh, really, hats <laughs> hats off to... Uh, Don't go looking for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> hats off to Enix. They, they really, they could have easily tilted, and they didn't. And I think that's something, you know, when you think about the veterans that they have on that team, 
the the fact that they just stuck with it they continued to play and try to get better uh throughout the entire match um that really speaks a lot and i think that you know having veterans helps in this case you know marto uh, he's been through it all he's been through those dramatic moments so he knows all too well all too well well we are going to try to jump into the second game right away uh everybody as uh we don't really feel the need to wait that was an emotional uh emotional game but we'd like to get into the second one right away so with that tasty bacon four court let's take it away clean your slates is that what you're telling us to do here dragon yeah it's right, so impact exodus uh, going to be banning the celeste away from themselves i think that's a good choice <laughs> We're just not going to give ourselves the opportunity to throw. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like most a good portion of the game was very well played by I love Harambe. But the ultimates, you got to work on those. Like if you end up watching this afterwards, I love Harambe, just work on the Celeste ults and you will have yourself a phenomenal Celeste. But those ults needed work. Hashtag not evil eight worthy. Well, we'll have to see who is because winner moves into round four, which is uh, pretty important stuff. The longer you can go as a winner, the longer you can wait for that second life to come through. Uh, so, as we said, no chole no cholesterol. Well, no Celeste, no Kestrel. Uh, it is going to be a Polyphemus, though, to pick up that Lance. Not giving it to Marto this round. And Twitch chat is brutal if you have a single typo in your message. <laughs> either way, yeah, make sure you, you double check your spelling before you hit enter. Uh, either way, it is going to be dark. And this time, the, the Lance and Arden, they swap sides, but Saw coming through. Well, I guess if you want a hero that you don't, you know, you're not really going to be worrying about if your ult is good or not, Saw is the great pick. <laughs> Oh, I love Harambe. We'll have to see how he does well uh, with this Sovereign. Like the Crystal. Nope. Laning... Roaming Samuel? Could be. I would say either a lane or a jungle Samuel. Uh, we have seen a lot of jungle Samuel. It's not... Uh, it's not really a jungle that uncommon weapon? of an oh, occurrence. Weapon Saw. Right. I was just so focused on Crystal Saw. It could also be double Crystal. You're very well right, my friend. You are very well right. Uh, Scarf and Taka to go with the Arden. Arden Taka can definitely uh, rush down just as easily as what we saw with the the Crawl Arden, but I think uh, I don't know. It's really hard to call this one. Polly is going to be on the Sammy, and Kupu yep. is on the Lance. So yeah, I, I think Taka is actually really good into Saw, if it's a Crystal Saw, not so much into a Samuel. So that pick could be very hit or miss for Bladeheart. Uh, Bruticus on the scarf once again scarf is phenomenal into saw because as soon as he throws down that suppressing fire that's just a free target for a spitfire and goop so we'll have to see how it works out looks like it is at the very least the crystal samuel looking to duck down into the jungle and saw going into the lane we won't know if it's a weapon or a crystal saw for at least a couple minutes uh, kind of interesting to see that he started with the roadie run at level one. Yeah. As opposed to suppressing fire. This happened earlier as well today. Uh, level one roadie run. And because we talked about this, right? You can't. Uh, you, it was the very first game of Lance, Catherine, Saw, and there's no suppression fire to set up for any of the mm -hmm. combos. Uh, so we'll have to see. Uh, if it is going to be double crystal. I'll be very curious. I love Harambe, very likely to be weapon in my books at this point. Marto, though, I'm going to point this out. Marto on this Arden has a protector contract. Yep. That's, that's actually got buffed recently there as well. It's really good if you want to go aggressive early on, but up against this comp, I'm not sure you can. Well, it's also really good if you're expecting your opponent to go aggressive early on as well. So I think that's more of what they're in line looking for. As you can see, uh, the entirety of Impact Exodus coming up to the lane to get things kicked off here but just gonna be a little bit of trade looks like well we're still gonna have to wait to see if it will be weapon or crystal saw at this point yeah and, uh, you know harambe is just gonna start adding up some of the farm and we'll find out soon enough it is definitely a crystal samuel there, yeah. there is there's no von c here today thankfully because <laughs> is that because he would be in challenge brackets or because you just don't want to see a weapon sam a little column a little column b 
<laughs> I wasn't too sure which one to assume at that. Point. As soon as you said that, like, thankfully, it's like, oh, was that a shot's fired? Or... Like, it was actually, it was mostly because I don't want to see a weapon Samuel. But thinking about it now, if Fonsi was in Challengers, like, this would be terrifying. <laughs> like, just to think, because that would mean that a team managed to knock TSM out of the Evil Eight. Hey, one day that could happen. But right now. Yeah, right now, it's, it's tall. <laughs> that would be right terrifying now. to think that there's a team in Challengers that is TSM's level or better. Like, that is that's a very dominant Challenger team. Okay, well, Snow Avalanche. Boom. Mike dropped with the example there. But that was the split after. They came in. They were in split one. They were Challenger. Then they, and eight, one, and then they and got evil eight, and then they got evil eight, and then they took. Yeah, but they had a split to become championship level. Fine. <laughs> more games of the past. It is double crystal bacon. So I love when games start off nice and slow because they give us time to go horribly <laughs> off topic. Banter. Yeah. <laughs> double crystal though is uh, secured. That suppression fire was horrendous, and uh, Harambe is going to take some chunks. He'll live, but uh, we'll have to see how the double crystal will work out in the moment. Yeah, it is double crystal, like you said, and I I don't have a problem with it being double crystal. Double crystal is still very strong, uh, even if your opponent just starts stacking up a ton of shield. But right now, another suppressing fire. This one's much better. Rudicus, very, very low. Polyphemus trying to get some damage from the back lines. Oof. They find a kill. Gotta say, man, these lances, that, uh, that Sammy worked out very well right there. And I love Harambe with that dank shank. Good stuff, man. So one and nil. That's good for Impact Exodus because uh, they're not exactly winning in terms of uh, you know the sets. If they can get a nice start here, this could go to a game three if they can carry the momentum. Yeah, and it is the suppressing fire now being maxed by I Love Harambe. A wise decision there. You know, we there used to be a debate about if you you know go for the roadie run or the suppressing fire first. But it's just, it's so much more efficient to go for this pressing fire. You add a lot of damage into uh, what you're able to output, as the Crystal saw, if you max out the B. So I'm glad to see that one come out. I still really want to see him max out the roadie run as well, like by the end of it. But I want to see five in five. You and that roadie run, man. Bladeheart is going to try to have uh, his dancing shoes on does actually outdance his opponent so he did get some of that back i'm not totally sure he got all of it but uh you know pretty pretty secure in that one keeping a poly a little bit more on his toes not getting the kill is definitely a bit of a blow here to impact yeah absolutely and uh i mean to start things off one kill to zero gold is slightly in favor of impact exodus like I said, they, they were winning. They flat out were winning game number one before they decided that they didn't actually want to. And so they they, they have a very good shot to actually take a game off of Enix and perhaps even the series. But Polly going to get jumped on. Samuel is just so good. Shot in the back, man. I love Harambe with the suppression fire. Big props right there. It was Kupu, though, to spear that Taka. And Taka immediately goes right into that uh, crown. So they look like they had a good rush down on top of Polyphemus. But that drifting dark, he stays very mobile. We use the fountain there from Kupu. And I love Harambe to, uh, coming in. Might pay for it with his life here. Nope, he's going to be okay. Bruticus and Marto not finding a kill. Very similar to game number one so far. Yeah, uh, right now they are going to be taking some big damage onto Bruticus as well, but he's going to be allowed to recall. Polyphemus looking for an opportunity to go aggressive in the jungle, not going to find it, and so when they just actually come back up to the lane, Harambe looks like going to be going for the Broken Myth first item, does finish that off now, so that's a pretty early first tier 3 offensive item to come out. Nice job by the Saw. Doing well, doing well. Yeah, uh, six minutes for a broken myth. It's pretty, pretty goes to. I gotta say, Polly, I think spread out a little bit too much into the tier ones. It's gonna take a little bit more time to ramp up, and they're picking up this minion mine just a little bit later than uh, what we kind of see in the evil eight, you know, the six minute mark or so. Bruticus mm -hmm. has been pushing up lane as well, Bacon. Like they're continually just trying to put the pressure on top of Harambe, uh, but they haven't really found that kill yet. Yeah, trying to push in a saw, not typically. Uh 
the easiest of things to do, but right now they're finding some good damage. The Impale does get a root. Nice Ooh. gauntlet, though, is going to keep Kupu inside, and he's going to have to combat roll away. He gets out for now. Does eventually go down. I think he was expecting some kind of help there from Harambe. He yeah, kind of uh, I didn't want to comment there. on it because my game sort of like partially. <laughs> no, he, I saw that. that. He was just so he I held his gun up high and watched actually his just died. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, I wasn't going to say oh, anything because I, I wasn't 100% sure, but it definitely looked like he wasn't helping, and glad to know that I have confirmation of that. Yeah, Actually, Polly those boots. glad to know, but... Yeah, well, you never want to be glad to know your teammate <laughs> is just something of a jerk, but... Uh, <laughs> Polly using the boots, he's going to survive at least for now. Here comes Koopa with his own boots, but Blade Heart and Marto, they've cleaned through the jungle. And again, that turret is getting lower and lower. Bruticus just really keeping up the pressure. He's not winning in farm. Bruticus is, is not up there with the last hits, but the pressure is, is really mm -hmm. doing well. And they found that Polly is trying to come in, so here comes that sandwich. Samuel is just so difficult to take down between his perk and the passive lifesteal, but now he is going to get found out here without being able to take down that treant, and he is going to fall. Marto and the solo kill. Very nicely done. As soon as he hit that scout trap, it was basically game over for him. And he knew it. He wanted to just try to get that one minion, uh, that one trant if he could. But he couldn't. So two and two. We'll climb it back a little forward here as uh, it is Team Enix to tie it up. They are going to maintain a bit of a gold lead, but it's pretty variable right now, Bacon. Yeah, it absolutely is. It's a another close game in terms of the gold, which is what it was for the majority of game number one until uh, you know Impact Exodus were able to actually start breaking it open. A very nice dodge from Blade Heart, but not gonna be enough to get him out to safety. Where is it? There's gonna be the flare, that little bit extra boots. movement speed. Where are oh the boots? Goodness. Where's the movement? Oh, he's gonna get out. Blade Heart, what a play! Polly, oh no, don't come back in. Where was the drifting dark, Polly? Where was the drifting dark? Here comes all of Team Enix now. They have that flare up. There's the drifting dark. Trust trying to make amends. The Oblivion is not going to hit. Bladeheart is still in that drift. It doesn't matter. He's going to be down toast. We had to use out the gauntlet, but double kill secured. I love Harambe. He's not even going to get anything done either. The lane just finally being pushed up. and He has virtually no farm to go pick up. Hashtag where's my carry? Hashtag uh, I mean, you, you saw the entire team rotating down for that, and I love Harambe just stood in lane picking up farm. Not really helping out his team for the second time already in nine minutes. Gotta defend his enclosure. That's where the turret is. Yeah, well, it's, when you're in the rest of your teammates are dead, guess what? Your turret's gonna get pushed in. Eh, tomato, tomato. Uh, so four and two with that double kill. Really like, nice momentum here. Asparagus. Like we're talking Come on, Bruticus. Different things. One more Spitfire. Oh, he takes it. Nope, he lied. I lied. Nah, okay, Turret there we go. The minions it. picked minions it up. Take Still, me. I mean, that's what I mean. The, the turret is continually being pushed in. Bruticus might not have been winning the last hit. Still isn't winning the last hits, but he's been able to put up a lot of that pressure. So now into this 2v3 Enix. Not going to make anything happen. They just don't have the damage without Brute. But uh, he's now two items in our fastest two item timing today at 10 minutes and 15 seconds. Is it, though? I mean, uh, the fastest I've seen is like 10 45, 10 50. Oh, today. I love Harambe is already two items for Scarf. <laughs> for, <laughs> you have to specify that if you're going to try and pull that one. Okay, but either way, the there way. is going to be a fight breaking out. Polyphemus getting taken down low. I love Harambe getting a nice suppressing fire back onto Bruticus. Bruticus just says, okay, I'll duck out. However, there is going to be kills getting traded one for one. Bruticus still very healthy, and Kupu should be going down. Goldminer getting involved in the action and finding a kill. Now, I love Harambe. Yeah, you're Where not you going, going anywhere. That's a good suppressing fire, but uh, even with that Eve of Harvest, it's not going to matter. So, Goldmine MVP right there. Might have lost out Bladeheart early, but the gold mine's got his back. So Enix again, more kills. That drifting dark from Polly, I thought was, I thought that was just it. I thought he was not going to be doing anything that fight, but he survived long enough to make the mm -hmm. trade. Fortunately, the trade ended up three for one and a gold mine to do. Now, I have to touch on again. I, I apologize for this seemingly like constant negativity, but the build from I Love Harambe. Going for the Eve of Harvest on yep. Saw. This yeah. is something Humanist and I actually talked about quite a bit in depth yesterday. Well, I don't uh, like it. So what do you guys say? I We don't like it as either. 
Yeah, because all in agreement it's sort of it's one of those things where if you're a CP saw, the entire point of what you're doing is supposed to be on the back lines, putting out a suppressive fire, maybe jumping in for a roadie run, but that gets you right back out of the fight. You shouldn't Harambe. be taking damage in the first place. Oh, Harambe's like, I don't know what to do. It hit boots. It's just like nothing. Now he's just uh, probably going to die here with this team because there goes Kupu. The front line is gone. They already did hit the fountain, but Polly is so low. Bladeheart is looking for trouble. <laughs> I, oh, Bladeheart didn't see him. Oh, <laughs> I thought that was for sure going to be a kill right there, but Harambe is going to drop. Yeah, no, no trouble there. And Polly, well, Bladeheart, it, he's going to find you. Yeah, <laughs> that's an ace. Another ace going over. Narrowly, not oh, almost not an ace, I should say. Uh, but it does come through. Bruticus going to just continue shoving down this lane. You can see he's actually caught up on CS. And with these ace buff minions, they're going to get so much work done. That is a second turret destroyed. Enix, they are definitely... Uh, oh, Kupu, what are you doing? What yeah. are you doing, Kupu? Ace buff know. minions, like... Bruticus, and Marto, and he decides to use an impale. That was, so remember that was how I mentioned that as long as Impact Exodus goes, doesn't get tilted off of their previous throw. Yep, I believe they have tilted. <laughs> it's just funny. I I don't remember looking at you at an angle like this before. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean they are definitely. Not making smart decisions any longer. Oh, uh, Polly. Goodbye, Polly. We knew you well. Case that in was point. A quick <laughs> Is Paul, Polly still not even two item? He's been uh, pretty, pretty just destroyed overall. Zero and five. Eighty-seven to forty-two. Far. Yeah, that's that's not so bueno, man. No, not at all. Like it, this has just not looked like the same teams. <laughs> Almost. I mean, if you take the last like three minutes of game one this looks like that impact exodus i don't know how that missed from from kupu but uh, enix you know after that comeback momentum is definitely on their side as we do have another gold miner up it's about to drop between marto and bladeheart they should be able to pick it up no problem that tension crown doing work we got uh, a lot of aegis out there bruticus not quite there but he has some good shield because double Crystal, right? You just stack up against the magic damage and boosh. Not uh, not really going to be doing too big of the numbers. Yeah, they absolutely not. Goldmine did get captured. Yep. Makes this gold lead jump up further. And now another fight. Yeah, but no gauntlet, so they're not going to get caged up. The Oblivion actually real good. 700 damage with the shank. And Harambe actually finally finds himself a kill. Marto rooted up. Nowhere to go. Bladeheart is actually uh, just going to be farming during all this. No problem. Marto just going to lead them away. Bladeheart should survive. Won't be the ace, but this is some good news for Impact Exodius. Unfortunately, they don't get those back. Uh, they do not get the backs, but they get a couple kills, get a little bit of momentum right before Kraken spawns. They could timing, yeah. look to try and pick this one up, but now Kubo, Bruticus please. is back alive. They have vision of this. They should know that it is happening. Oh, come on. There's, there we go. <laughs> if they just sit on it the whole fight, that's going to be rather surprising. Now, we do got Bladeheart trying to move in. There's a flare. Bruticus says don't care. And will they find the kills? The Kraken will get stopped. We do got Marto coming back. He has that gauntlet ready to go. We got some, I want to say, infusions on red side, but we don't. We actually only have the double crystal here uh, for impact. So There's a crystal. no Kraken. No Kraken. There's a weapon infusion. Yeah, it came out a little late. They had to get to the shop. Oh, so they're just going to turn it around, take it instead? They got Scarf and Attention Crown. Yeah, why not? Yeah, well, the Kraken is going to be contested. Harambe well, coming in. There it is. Yeah. Now the Kraken's actually going to be part of this fight, but look at Harambe, he's just kind of standing there, Bladeheart having his way, Oblivion! <gasps> Got Marto, didn't get Bladeheart, Bladeheart actually still going to be surviving through this one, look at Bruticus landing the damage, and it's actually going to be the Lance to take the Kraken, it doesn't even matter who wins the fight now, Kraken stolen out, Impact Exod Exodus, they lose out uh, that Samuel, but they're about to pick up the Bruticus, and I think this could be something good here. Well, how are they going to get... They don't get Bruticus. Kupu goes down. Yeah, look at Oh, the my. Harambe, and like, meanwhile, Harambe and Marto are oh duking God. it out. But Marto is going to oh, get oh, shit. Oh, 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 he's <laughs> The shield is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Harambe is like, no, no, mine. Come back. <laughs> doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Harambe is going to try it again. Barto, it doesn't happen again. But the Much suppressing fire gets a kill. What is going on this game? Ace, <laughs> Harambe can still turn this into an ace. I am so done right now. <laughs> Clown Absolutely Harambe. ridiculous. Make Harambe's actually very healthy. Suppressing fire. One more shot. We'll get the kill. Rody <laughs> run. The turret's down. Oh, oh no. The shields. Polly, do something. Damn it. Oh, my goodness. Harambe's just, like, working overtime here at the 7-Eleven. <laughs> and uh, Polly just strolls up. Doesn't do oh, a damn man. thing for the ace. <laughs> Those roadie runs, like, those are the, like, they're good. The roadie <laughs> runs are good, but I've never seen them blocked three times in a row like that. <laughs> oh, that has got to be so painful if you are out of Harambe. Like, we need how frustrated days. are you after that? Like, that is unbelievably oh. frustrating to have to deal with. If he wasn't tilted then, he's tilted now. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. Oh, it's just showing up on the stream now. Oh, it's so good to see. Let's give a warm welcome to Lang Li Lang, one of our uh, watch subscribers it. here in chat. Good on you, mate. Oh, man. I'm just watching these these roadie <laughs> runs get blocked <laughs> again. <laughs> like, it wasn't a fail. Harambe did great work, but the fact that they just kept getting blocked and blocked and blocked in quick succession, I just want to put oh, that the in the first one was blocked, fail. the second one didn't have the range, and then he did get one to connect onto Arden, right. and then the third one, or, or the fourth one, was blocked once again. <laughs> Too funny. Oh, Too man. Funny. Treads forward. Let's see what kind of fight we get this time. <laughs> Polly in the drifting duck right into the gauntlet. Bladeheart looking to clean up this one, but that's going to be suppressing fire. Polly going to come down low. Nobody's even touched Harambe yet, and the damage on top of Bladeheart is unreal. Those autos after he's all spun up. Harambe doing some work right there, my friend. So Bruticus, the suppressing, not quite enough to catch the dragon. We're looking for another sh a dagger. Another uh, dank shank, but doesn't quite happen. Bruticus gets the kill. Polly is still trying to kite out Marto. Marto actually still might get the kill on him. And Bruticus with the Spitfire, that's going to be it for the mage. But we do get the return. Harambe <laughs> Harambe. on the hunt. Harambe's revenge! Harambe's on the hunt. Come on, <laughs> we've already used out everything here. There's that one attack, looking for the second. Now, the slow... <laughs> We've used out the shield. Marto, does he have anything left? He locks it too early, but it doesn't matter. We lose out. The auto attacks will be good. Oh, but it's not Double. an ace because <laughs> Bladeheart just respawned. Double broken myth. <laughs> Double broken myth. Oh, oh my goodness. Why? Just pick up a, sh a uh, shatter glass, please, Harambe. Get a Where's this glass. damn shattered glass, man? <laughs> oh, okay, this game's turning into a bit of a clown fe uh, clown fest here. So uh, you could say it's clown fiesta. There's there's no ifs and buts about it but... at this point. <laughs> Twenty right. minutes in, sixteen to ten. It has been back and forth constantly. Enix still somehow have a gold lead. Not even sure where that's even coming from at this point. Uh. <laughs> Multiple, multiple, multiple saves on lack of aces. That's about it. <laughs> and Polyphemus is still 0-7 on a Samuel. Yep. Like, not really worth much right that now. Be happening. All right, best of three. Let's see who gets this one. That's going to be the gauntlet, but uh, Polly stunned up. I think Kupu is actually stunned up there as well. Gotta kill Harambe. Gotta kill Harambe here, folks. Looking for the kill on top of Harambe. We already used out the roadie run. There's the Oblivion. Gets blocked out. Marto has no shield. They can't get him. We finally bring down the Sun. There goes Kupu on top of it. Polly, the uh, tail between his legs. Can't deal with a 3v1. Well, they're not even going to chase 3v1. It's going to be 1v1, but Bruticus looks like he actually may give that one up as well because the Kraken is available. And, well, Storm Crown and a Scarf. You said it earlier. We've said it multiple times this season. Tonight. <laughs> Very good at taking Kraken. All right. So, so <laughs> not going for the kill, going for the Kraken is definitely the better of the trades. Uh, it just, it's so back and forth. You never really know which way these fights are going. But in theory, this should be something of a death push coming in here from Enix. Yeah, I mean, 
the this could be a final push if they really it's it comes down to like they just can ignore polyphemus at this point yes he's at the two item power spike that we've talked about with samuel a lot but we're 21 minutes in you should be beyond the two item power spike by this point his damage is not really doing anything to the side of enix because they have so much shield built up because it's a double yep. crystal comp yeah, and that's why we go for the double pierce here uh, from Harambe. Yeah, the, the broken myth, you can't double stack, but the pierce definitely does work. And when you're double crystal, you need as much pierce as you can get. Nice block there from Kupu. He does get out of that gauntlet. Could have been a bit better, but Kupu not looking so hot. He's still not looking so hot, but he does get the fountain off. He's just, he's just trying to be the distraction at this point, Bacon. Polly, drifting dark. It's your time to shine. Nope, 400 crits. Uh, not no, Nobody's shining here. Fuji would have his head on the desk at these Drifting Darks, constantly being thrown into the enemy team. I love Harambe, Harambe's last stand, but it's not gonna work out. The ace, Kraken's still alive, and Enix are going to take the series at long last. Very entertaining way uh, to go out, though. I give him that. Harambe will forever live in our glorious hearts. Oh my goodness! Oh, <laughs> they aren't I still eliminated. Want to put that into a video. That was amazing. We could have Impact Exodus come back in this tournament and still end up in the top eight on week three. Uh, double elimination, but what an incredible series that was, for better or for worse. In really sickness fun and in health. <laughs> Yeah, really fun stuff. Bladeheart, pretty much uh, just standard right there. Bruticus, you know, three items, uh, a little bit more pierce at the end as well as those tier three boots. It was uh, a really good game from Bruticus. 144 farm kind of belies the 11 kills he got, but between him and Harambe, it was like the, the battle of the CP carries. It was really fun. Oh, that being said, Dragon, um, what are we doing? So as uh, probably uh, somewhat inspect uh -oh, as expected, no, I'm here. Sorry about that. Uh, as expected, we are trying to uh, we've wrapped up the winners bracket for the most part, and we have a few matches going on right now in the loser bracket. We are going to try to get into some of those. We're going to take a quick break and then come back to you guys and let you know if we can or cannot uh, when we return from this break. Uh, so we'll be right back in a few moments. See you guys soon. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing Vile Dragon. Well, let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band be together well we are back everybody and uh we are we're wrapping up a few matches and a few series uh that are actually taking place in the loser bracket 
but it looks like uh, we do not have any to stream. Make sure you guys go on tournaments uh, and you can guys follow all the action, see which teams are winning and how much and uh, what the updates are uh, as far as the brackets are concerned. And of course, we will be posting those on the Vis Twitter. Make sure you guys follow uh, the Vis League Twitter uh, for all updates as well when we go live again. Uh, but this is the conclusion of the B group for week number one. So what that means is A played last uh, last night. B played today, and then they will be playing again to conclude their brackets to make it into the final eight. So we're going to be picking the top uh, four winner and four loser teams from each group. Uh, and those teams will be, of course, going and uh, competing in the top eight uh, on week number three. But uh, Tasty Bacon, man, it's been a long uh, but very fun broadcast. These last, dude, the, the Enix games have been phenomenal to watch. Uh, those have been really exciting. Uh, I'm not sure... Uh, you know, if we've got a lot of games really quite to that level here in the Challenger series, so definitely nice to end on a high note. Oh, are we done? Yeah, we uh, we I'm looking to uh, try to get into a game two in one of the series, but it has already <clears throat> oh, started. started. Yeah. Gotcha. So with that's uh -huh. uh, all right. Uh, with that, you know, it's been a it's been a long night, very exciting night for all the viewers. I'm sure watching some of these games. That last game itself was uh, a real treat. That's highlight worthy. <laughs> a lot of uh, great moments and uh, really close. I mean, actually, I would say the Impact versus Enix has been phenomenal. It's probably my favorite series of the night. Uh, it might even be my favorite of this split so far because just how close it was and also the plays being made just were at a very high level. Really impressed with Impact Exodus, actually. Yeah, uh, I got to say, you know, Impact Exodus will probably see them again. But Team Enix, you know, this was a this was one of the teams that was in contention for those top three spots in the last split. I have very uh, you know high expectations of them here into this one. Them, Necrolite, Noble Pro, uh, Pinga. You know, there's, there's a lot of big uh, team names still in this one, Dragon, that uh, I suspect it's going to come down very close to the wire at the end of week three. Absolutely. It's close, man, and uh, these teams are looking better and better. I gotta be—I'm really impressed. The skill cap between the top tier teams and some of the lower tier teams has really decreased. It's a much smaller gap than what we've used to, uh, what we're used to seeing, and a lot of these teams really performing at a high level. So, really encouraging for the competitive scene here in Vainglory. A lot of young talent is coming up through the ranks. Well, with that, guys, uh, it is does look like we are going to end the stream and call the night. We're wrapping up a few games, so make sure you guys check the brackets as we do try to uh, make sure that we get all of that updated tonight so you guys can see the status and see who will be playing uh, next week in Group A and Group B. So with that, um, I'm going to say thanks and good night to our casters tonight, Tasty Bacon and Four Court Jester. Thank you guys so much. That's a bit of pleasure, man. All right, well, we'll see you guys next week, same time, 5 p.m. Pacific, as we start off Group A week number two for the Vis Challenger Series. We'll see you then. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy.